So why is Allah saying to him the following ayah? Stay away, ya Muhammad, from idols. You're supposed to be a follower of Jesus, and you're using words like that. Well, and it's not my words. I, 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 it's not my words. It's the words of Allah. Are you embarrassed of Allah? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. This is the moment that you all have been waiting for. For, for. We are live. Live, live, live. Yeah. You're listening to the live broadcast of your friendly neighbor, Stream Doctor and Christian Apologist. Apologist, apologist, apologist. The warrior for Christ and enemy of Allah and his messenger. Messenger, messenger. This is your favorite YouTuber now speaking from Cave Hero. Hero, Hero, Hero. Rob Christian, 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 Christian. Please fasten your seatbelts. Houston, we are ready for takeoff. Oh, oh. We are back, baby. We are live, baby. Let's go. Hello, guys. Welcome. We are live. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Nice to see you here. Welcome our admins, TM Crosspulls, Tony King, Chloe Waked. Uh, I saw Phil Herrera present. I'm not sure if there are more admins. Hey, Sheikh Umut is back from his honeymoon. Hey, welcome back, brother. Uh, welcome back, Sheikh Umut. Uh, Nice to see you again, bro. I hope you had a wonderful time with your wifey. Uh, I don't want to say where you were. You told me where you were, but, you know, let's keep that a secret. Let people guessing, right? Our brother, Sheikh Hamoud, who is an ex-Muslim, who used to be an ex-Muslim, and uh, he became a Christian and married a wonderful lady, and he just came back from his honeymoon. So congratulations again, brother Sheikh Hamoud. Nice to see you again, bro. Uh... Brother Sheikh Humud uh, and others like Phil Horay or Debit Rai. I'm not sure if Debit Rai is here right now. I don't think so. Maybe he'll join later. They always take care of uh, the references like Phil Horay. He always posts the comments, uh, included the references and uh, people like Debit Rai, uh, C1. Uh, last time Phil Horay did it because no other admin uh, could do it. Uh, Debit Rai also, like I said, uh, they always provide a timestamp, so if you join in too late and still you want to take notes and learn from our teachings, you can find everything in the comment section, in the live chat, and also in the description box. So uh, don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll help you out, all right? So welcome everybody. Uh, guys, normally I want to say hi to everybody, uh, but I'm not going to mention the names today because I really have a small window. Uh, but hey, uh, anyway, guys, Ola means well, welcome, uh, my friends in the regulars. Uh, we have even Jihad Yusuf in uh, the live chat. Uh, Jihad Yusuf, uh, that uh, has nothing to do with my today's topic. Today we're going to prove again that the satanic verses are real. The satanic verses that happened in the life of Muhammad are a real, authentic, historical event. And uh, if you if you want to... Talk about that, uh, Jad Yusuf. You can call me later on my live show. All right. So I didn't open Skype yet, guys, because we need to pray. And you know what? 
we always uh, do in the beginning. So bear with me. Hello, everybody, again. I'm not going to mention all of your names. Uh, forgive me. But God bless you. Thank you for being here. As you know, people, my uh, PC died on me the other day. I wanted to go live. And half hour before the live show, uh, my PC stopped working and I could not restart. So I had to cancel that live show the other day. And it turned out that my power supply, uh, the power supply that provides the, uh, the power inside the PC, uh, it stopped working. Uh, so I am now uh, having a different one, an older one that I had access to. I had an old PC sitting also under my desk. So I took the old power supply and then uh, installed it in uh, this PC. So I hope my PC will uh, be stable. So pray for uh, the live stream, guys. Pray, <laughs> pray for me that we can uh, continue the live show uh, like always. So I still need to buy a new power supply because I'm not sure how the old, this old one that is more than eight years old will uh, <laughs> uh, work. But, you know, uh, we have faith and uh, pray for us that we can do this, guys. So without, so without any further ado, let us start. As you know, we always start with a prayer. So I want to ask you to pray with me. بِإِسْمِ الْأَبُ الْإِبْنِ وَالْرُوحَ الْقُدُسِ إِلَهٌ وَاحِدَ Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We pray. Father, thank you for allowing me to do another live stream again on short notice. Please bless our audience, all the admins, and our subscribers. Bless us and keep all of us, including our loved ones and families, healthy and safe. Keep all of us healthy and safe, O oh Lord. I want to ask you, O oh Jesus Christ, to keep my wife and baby boy healthy and safe, protect them and bless them, and bless everybody who is here now and listening and watching to our very live stream. Thank you for this lovely and awesome audience of subscribers who are always here to support us for so many days, for so many years now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray to you. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray to you and ask you to cleanse us with your holy blood and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Please also shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims, maybe like Jihad Yusuf here, who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes. We do not hate them, oh Jesus Christ. We do not hate them because you commanded us, O oh Lord, to even love our enemies and forgive people who curse us or persecute us. Please, Lord, we pray for them. Open their eyes so they can be saved as we are saved through your holy blood, O oh Christ. Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today and guide me so I can speak the truth. Nothing but the truth without any error or any shame. And Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In your holy name, O oh Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Speaking from cave. Hira. 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 We are live. 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 Welcome, everybody. Yes, you heard it correctly. We are live. Welcome, uh, Jergen Deniers, also another admin who just joined. I hope I did not miss to mention anyone. TM Crossbow, I think I mentioned you earlier. All the admins, keep them in your praise, guys. Keep us in your praise, and let's do this. Without further ado, let us start. Welcome. <clears throat> All right. Let me sp switch the screens so that we can start. All right. As you know, guys, this is the topic today. Because my PC died on me, <laughs> I had some time to read some books. Yes, I had some time to read my books that I downloaded and had no time for to read. So I started reading and I found some shocking evidence. Some new shocking information about the satanic verses that we never brought up before. And this is another 100% proof that the satanic verses are a real historical event in the life of Muhammad. Muhammad did deliver the satanic verses and the Islamic books confirm it with authentic sahih narrations. Did you catch it? I have proof 
from the Islamic book, the most authentic Islamic books out there, with Sahih Isnad, Sahih Chain, that the Satanic verses are real. Now, guys, I did multiple live shows about the Satanic verses. I did a live show on the YouTube channel of Brother Sam Shamu, who invited me to, to talk about it. We did also a live show on uh, Brother El Fadi, Sira International. And I also did two live shows about this topic. And we proved to you that uh, Sheikh Al Albani, who wrote Nasb al Majaniq about the Gharaniq, right? The Nasb al Majaniq, his book, how it's nothing but a deception. How he lied about Al Atshi. Remember the word name Al Atshi? He threw one of the Tabi'een called one of the successors of the Sahaba who called Al Atshi. He threw him under the bus and said, we don't know anything about him. We don't know who this Tabi'i is. Later, we found out in uh, multiple uh, references like uh, Tariq Baghdad by Khatib al-Baghdadi that Al Atshi is a well-known guy. He's trustworthy. Thiqat. Trustworthy. Right? Thiqat Ma'moon. Highly trustworthy, and uh, you, you can tr uh, trust him regarding hadith when he's inside the chain. So that's another proof how modern scholars, modern Muslim apologists, how they throw even the tabi'een, the successors, the disciples of the Sahaba, of the companions of Muhammad, under the bus to save Muhammad from the satanic verses. Yeah. Sorry, guys, for the thumbnail. Some people might get scared or whatever. Yeah, I found this picture and then I created this in Photoshop. So, yeah, guys, this is only a picture. So, yeah, Muslims, sometimes they are even afraid when they see this. They are even afraid to join the live show. Imagine. So, yeah, I hope many Muslims will get triggered. And guys, Christians, please invite as many people as you can because we are about to present new material that has never been shown before in the English section on YouTube. And remember, remember that video of a sheikh, Sheikh Wasim Yusuf, who said more than 90% of the Muslim references and books are hidden by the Muslim scholars. More than 90%, they hide more than 90% about Islam, because they know if the scholars will bring it up, there are, is going to be a huge tsunami, a huge wave of, of apostates who will knock over the ummah. So if, imagine if we can prove that the satanic verses are a real historical event in the life of Muhammad, and Muhammad actually did deliver satanic verses, what will happen to the Muslims who watch today's live show? So you see how important it is, guys. Yes, John McDermott. More than 90% of the Muslim sources, scholars hide them because it's too damaging to talk about. And this is one of them. So we Christians have to do the Muslim homework. Someone like me who needs to take a deep dive in the Islamic book to find the awkward, huge black holes. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. When you do a deep exactly when you take a deep dive when you do a take a deep dive in Islamic books brother things will become really awkward for the ummah for the nation of Islam and today is the proof guys so we have a lot of meat right we have a lot of meat and i want you to be focused at all times and i want you to invite as many people as possible guys i'm really disappointed about the numbers for some reason christians if I was a Muslim apologist right here, right now, I would have now at least a thousand viewers. What is going on, Christians, with the numbers? Invite, come on. This is a really damaging topic. Christians, please don't be lazy. Invite, share the link on social media. Help me to help you. I can do it on my own. I cannot do this on my own, Christians. <clears throat> uh, Amelia... Uh for some reason, uh, the nightbot attacked you and put you on timeout. What did you do? Anyway. 
She's a sister, I think. She, yeah, she's a Christian sister. So uh, take it easy uh, with the spamming and whatnot because it will trigger our night bot and then it will time you out. So take take it easy, okay? All right, guys. Admins, take care of the live chat. Uh, don't uh, time out the Muslims who, if they are not trolling, if they don't spam and so on, you know? Let them come here and maybe they will learn something new, all right? Now, maybe you have heard in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken, in the 80s, 70s, 80s, I think in the 80s, Salman Rushdie that you see here, this awesome guy, he wrote a book and it became the number one bestseller. He wrote a book called The Satanic Verses. And he said, and I quote, Salman Rushdie said, and I quote, if Muhammad would have been alive again, he would have no objection to the Satanic Verses. Muhammad himself, the prophet of Islam, prophet Muhammad himself, the fake prophet, would have no objection to the satanic verses. Why? Because Muhammad did actually deliver the satanic verses. He did it. The books, the Islamic books are confirming it. He did deliver satanic verses. But modern Muslims today, Muslims of today, they are too embarrassed. They will say, hey, how is it possible? Muhammad claims that he is the seal of all the prophets, the final prophet, the seal of all the prophets. He completed all the religions of the earlier prophets. So how is it possible that Muhammad delivers satanic verses and commits shirk? And remember, the satanic verses in the Arabic uh, say, or go like this, ثِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَى وَإِنَّ شَفَعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَى those two verses are the satanic verses, all right? تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَى وَإِنَّ شَفَعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَى So this part in the Arabic, do you see it? تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَى وَإِنَّ شَفَعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَى These two verses are the satanic verses which Muhammad delivered to the pagans, the Quraysh of Mecca, and he spoke highly of their idols, their Gharaniq, Gharaniq means the bird idols. Al-Lat, Al-Uzza, Wal-Manad, the three daughters of Allah. The three bird idols, the three daughters of Allah. Thilk al-Gharaniq al-Ula, wa inna shafa'atahunna laturtaja. Meaning, these are the exalted cranes, the bird idols, and their intercession is hoped for. Why? Because remember, the Quraysh of Mecca, they used to worship Allah, the supreme God. He had many nicknames. Right? His name one of his names was Samud, Samad, As Samad, Samad. Other nickname was Hubal or Baal. Baal. Right? Baal, Hubal, Samad, Allah. Those are the nicknames of Allah. Alright? So even the Quraysh, and I hope that uh, Jihad Yusuf is watching. Jihad Yusuf, the word Tawheed does not mean Oneness, it means unification. To unify the bird idols with the supreme God, Allah, or Baal, or Yasin. Sin, Sin, Yasin, Sin. Sin is another nickname of Allah. Baal, Hubal, those are the one, and per the one and the same person in disguise. It's Satan who is disguising as an idol. The Muslims worship Satan. The Quraysh, before Islam, used to worship Satan in the shape of a stone. Because remember, Satan can come in many shapes. Right, ya Muslimi? And I hope the Muslims today will learn something. And we are going to present new material that is never shown before on YouTube in the English section. We have to read the Islamic books to find these shocking facts that Muhammad did deliver the satanic verses. All right? Why verses? Because these are two satanic verses. One and two. From right to left. All right? Two sentences. Those are the sentences. Those are the verses that Satan put on the tongue of Muhammad. And Muhammad gave it to the Quraysh. And the Quraysh were really happy but shocked at the same time. How can Muhammad... He, first, he attacks our idols, and now he's saying beautiful stuff about our idols. He's giving us beautiful stuff about our idols, right? And then Muhammad, 
after finishing the entire surah, Surah An-Najm, chapter 53, he bowed down, he prostrated, he did sujood, and everybody, including the Sahaba who were there, and the Quraysh, they all bowed down and prostrated and did shirk. Everybody that day, Ali, Abu Bakr, all of them became mushrikun, mushrikeen that other day. All right, Muhammad became a nice little mushrik. He became like his father and mother, a mushrik that day. So what is going on, basically? What happened? Muhammad, when he starts to read Surah Al-Najm, let's say he started here, right? By the star, when it goes down, right? And then all the way down to chapter, to the same chapter, sorry, to Ayah 19. أَفْرَأَيْتُ مَنْ لَا تَوَالْعُزَّ وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَ الْأَخْ so have you seen and the other the third manat so have you seen and another the third manat and then after this part here Satan starts to put the two verses the satanic verses on his tongue without Muhammad realizing it yeah, Amal, Amelia, no, the night bot is a bot. It says bot, right? So, yeah. <sighs> really? Anyway. So, Satan, after Ayah 20, he includes the satanic verses on the tongue of Muhammad. Muhammad not knowing, not realizing that it's not Quran, it's not Jibreel who is giving him Quran, but it's Satan actually in disguise. All right, so, again, to make it more clear, and I want you to take a screenshot, guys, please. Please take a screenshot. The satanic verses, these two ayahs from Satan. These two ayahs from Satan used to be between ayahs 20 from Surat and Najm and 21. Do you see it? Here, right here in the middle. Have you seen or have you considered Allah and al uzza and Manah the third, the last one? And then Satan comes in between. And then Muhammad continues, not realizing that two verses from Satan are included in his speech in the Quran of Allah. And Allah was asleep. Allah, Allah did not send Jibreel to spank Muhammad. But much later, Jibreel came to correct Muhammad. And Muhammad, uh, he blamed Satan for it. Right? Now, guys. I hope you are focused. I hope you are still here and you're still with me. I hope I'm not putting you asleep. I wish that there would be more people watching, but for some reason, our Christian friends are not inviting and sharing the link to notify people that we are doing huge damage today. And I um, still did not present my new material. Christians, come on, man. I need your help. Invite. I want at least 200 people watching when we start bringing up the new material. People are working. People are working. Okay. What an excuse. What an excuse. What about uh, the rest of uh, the planet? Every, everybody turns out to be working, guys. Everybody in uh, Indonesia, everybody in the United Kingdom are still working. Right? Everybody's still working, guys. People are working. Brother, people are working and watching Netflix, brother. That's the reason, brother. People don't care. Netflix is more important, brother. Listening music and watching uh, anime and uh, watching uh, movies and Netflix, it's more important, brother. So, guys, what about the early scholars? Right? What about the early scholars? What did they say about the satanic verses? What about someone like Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani? And I know that Yusuf... Jihad Yusuf knows Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, a giant, a hafiz, someone who memorized the Quran, a giant considered for the Muslim, Sunni Muslims. Why? Because remember, Ibn Hajar is the one who wrote the multi-volume commentary on Sahih al-Bukhari. That Ibn Hajar. Yeah, and we showed you last time that he's a hypocrite. But anyway, 
What else is new? Any any scholar in Islam is a hypocrite. And we are going to spank them one by one. I don't care who you are. Big, small, I don't care. But anyway, since Muslims follow this guy, Ibn Hajar, Ibn Hajar, a recognized authority on traditions, insists on the truth of this report and says, as we have mentioned above, three of its chains of the narrator satisfy the conditions requires for an authentic report. Guys, and I'm going to show you at least two. <laughs> you see, Ibn Hajar is honest here. And he says three of the chains of narrators satisfy the conditions for an authentic report. So Ibn Hajar confirms the satanic verses were authentic. The satanic verses are historical event. We're going to show you two today, two reports, two hadith, two hadiths that are sahih. Two, not one, but two. Two hadiths are sahih. Regarding the satanic verses. So how do Muslims say it's weak, it's da'if, it's, uh, it's, it never happened. And here's the reference, guys, from where I took it. This is the reference for this report about Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. So you even have the reference, all right, in the bottom. So if you take a screenshot, you can use this in your... Uh, material or in your debates whatever i hope you are going to take notes guys because the material that i'm presenting to you is really hard to find you need to buy books to uh, to to find this information can you imagine so uh, i want to thank our lord and savior jesus christ for allowing us to give this free to everybody to make this free for everybody so you can benefit from it and expose and destroy this cult together with me because remember knowledge is key only knowledge can destroy this evil cult of Islam. When we read the Islamic books, we can turn it and use them against the fake prophet and this evil man-made cult that is uh, a satanic cult. Satan is behind Islam and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah and Satan are the one and same guy, remember? What about Ibn Taymiyyah? We showed you Ibn Hajar. What about Ibn Taymiyyah? Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. What about him? What did he say about the satanic verses? Tony King. About the signs of hadith. We're going to use the signs of hadith. Remember, Muslims call it a huge science. Brother, we are so proud about the signs of hadith. The men inside the chain, the isnad, the chain of narration. We have something called signs of hadith, brother. Now, boy, oh boy, we're going to use that against your fake prophet who delivered satanic verses today. Don't worry. Don't worry. We are there. We're going to provide it. And we're going to use it against your satanic prophet who delivered satanic verses. Right? Just bear with me. You're uh, five steps ahead of me, Tony King. Easy, brother. Easy. We'll, we'll go there. <laughs> Ibn Taymiyyah, as we mentioned in our earlier live shows when we brought this topic up, Ibn Taymiyyah himself... The giant Sheikh, Sheikh al Islam. And remember, people like Sister Fifi, Mumu Hijab, Ibn Fibn, Farooq, they all follow what Ibn Taymiyyah says and they consider him to be their Sheikh. Yo, Fadilat al Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, what did you say about the satanic verses? Read with me, guys. And this is the reference here that I got it from in the bottom. Shahab Ahmed, Ibn Taymiyyah, and the satanic verses. That's the title of the book. And it's written in 1998, page 122. Look what it says. Ibn Taymiyyah, against the majoritarian opinion of the scholars of his day, accepted the historicity of the satanic verses. <laughs> Who? Ibn Taymiyyah accepted the historicity of the satanic verses. He says it's sahih. Ibn Taymiyyah said, Ibn Taymiyyah said, it's sahih, brother. The satanic verses is sahih. Please allow it to sink in, ya Muslim, if you're watching. But I doubt that there are Muslims because I have still zero dislikes, guys. That means we don't have any Muslims watching. And Christians, you have some homework to do to invite Muslims. Muslims must come and watch this, Christians. Muslims must come. You must invite Muslims on social media let them come and watch the damaging stuff that we are going to present. All right? 
So, Ibn Taymiyyah said, this is a historical event in the life of our Prophet. And he continues saying, he accepted the historicity of satanic verses as something wholly consonant with Muhammad's status and mission as the messenger of Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah asserted that belief in the incident, in the satanic verses incident, was the position of the early Muslims of the Salaf. Guys, the uh, first generation Muslims are called the Salaf, basically. First and second generation are the most important generation in Islam. And they, the early Muslims, they believed, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, that the satanic verses is a fact. Muhammad did deliver satanic verses and thus the original and authentic truth. Did you catch it, what Ibn Taymiyyah just, what we just read about Ibn Taymiyyah? Do you see how damaging it is when we Christians find out what the early scholars used to believe about the satanic verses? And we have to do the homework of Muslims, Muslims who are illiterate, who do not read their own books. And they have no idea what their scholars, early scholars, used to think of the satanic verses. But today's Muslims who are very embarrassed and they know about the topic, they are going to say, no, no, it's da'if. Without any hesitation, without any proof, they will say, no, brother, the satanic verses never happened. It's da'if, it's rejected. It's a fabrication Our about our beloved prophet. Our beloved prophet never delivered satanic verses. It goes against his authenticity as a prophet. How can Muhammad call himself the final prophet, but at the same time, worship idols and become a nice little mushrik. That's not possible, right? That's what they say, right, always. It's not possible. It goes against his nature. How can we believe that about our beloved prophet, that he became a mushrik? How is it possible that Muhammad destroyed idols when he conquered Mecca? Remember, Muhammad was in Medina. And he came with a huge army to conquer Mecca. And he destroyed the idols. So how is it possible that when Muhammad was in Mecca, he worshipped idols, he delivered satanic verses? That cannot, that cannot be possible, right? Right? I hope you are still following, guys. Please invite. And Muslims... Like I said, they will say the following. Now, here is the Muslim main argument against the satanic verses to explain away the disaster which we call the satanic verses incident. They will say the hadith, brother, the hadith about this story of, about the satanic verses is fabricated. Some of them will also say the hadith is daif. Others, they will say the hadith is mursal. The hadith is mursal. Now, what is mursal hadith, guys? Admins, Christians, our guests in the live chat. What is a Mursal Hadith? Do you have any idea what a Mursal Hadith is? Because this is basically the argument of the ones who did actually study about this topic, the Satanic Verses. Most of them who studied, who care to study, they will say the Hadith about the Satanic Verses is Mursal Hadith. Anyone, any idea? Anyone in the live chat, do you have any idea what a Mursal Hadith, even if it's a Sahih Hadith, let's say it will, they will write it like this, Mursal Sahih Hadith. What does that mean? Let me explain it, guys. So I want you to take notes. What is a Mursal Hadith? Even uh, there are some Hadiths in Sahih Al-Bukhari that are Mursal, Mursal Hadith. Mursal Hadith. But even if it's sahih, but they will reject it or call it da'if. Why? Here is why. Let me explain to you. A mursal hadith. Here is, I'm going to give you an example so you can maybe learn what a mursal hadith. Because you will encounter many hadith that are mursal. They are co considered to be mursal hadith. A mursal hadith. Here is an example. Let's say you have Muhammad on top, right? He is the one who is talking and the Nabi Muhammad said this and Muhammad said that. It is in a hadith. You'll find it often, right? Then you will see a Sahabi in the chain, in the chain of narration, a Sahabi like Ubay ibn Kaab or another famous Sahabi, Ibn Mas'ud, for example, or uh, maybe Abu Huraira. So you have Muhammad, you have a Sahabi, and then 
The third is the successor, the the um, disciple of a companion, right? A tabi'i, a follower of the companion. Now, what is the problem in a mursal hadith? Here is the problem. I put a red cross here to make it clear for you. What is happening in a mursal hadith? Guys, are you, are you still following? Let's say, let's say, a tabi'i skips a sahabi, let's say uh, a, a sahabi named whatever, uh, Muhammad Ali or something, he skips uh, Ubay bin Kaab or uh, Ibn Mas'ud, for example. So there's a gap, a small gap in the chain of narration. So a tabi'i skips a sahabi, a companion. So there's a gap in between the chain. A tabi'i quotes the prophet. So a tabi'i, a successor of the companions, quotes Muhammad but skips to mention the Sahabi. Now you understand what the Mursal is? Are you now following? Are you understanding what the Mursal Hadith is? So basically there's a gap. A Sahabi is missing, for example. Now some Muslims will accept it and call it uh, authentic. Others will say when it does not suit their agenda, they will say, no, no, we reject it. It's dive. You know those games, right? The cherry picking game. So this is an example of what a Mursal Hadith is. And about the satanic verses, there are around, let's say, four or five mursal ahadith. Hadith, singular, ahadith, multiple hadiths. That's how you say it in Arabic. Ahadith, multiple, singular hadith. Ahadith. So there are around four or five, right? But today, we're going to show you two authentic ones. Two sahih ones. Not mursal. Because Muslims, remember, they always say what? Mursal Hadith, it's Mursal Hadith, but wait, <laughs> I have uh, shocking evidence for you. I'm going to present to you two authentic chains, two authentic chains, two Sahih chains. Yeah, and exactly, LOC, Nur al-Masih Habibi. They even accept Da'if Hadith, of course. Remember, Da'if Hadith does not mean rejected. It means accepted, but that you have a, a grade. Let's say a Sahih Hadith is an AA+, plus, right? Uh, Hassan is AB or a B+, plus, and Da'if is C or D. Did you catch it? Still, you know, they are. there's a huge attack nowadays. There's a huge attack on Da'if Hadith. But Da'if Hadith does not automatically mean rejected. Matruk, for example, uh, is rejected, right? Matruk. Taraku, uh, if, uh, if there's a... Uh, a non-trustful guy, they call him a, mat uh, a matruk al-hadith, taraku, right? So even the if is accepted, but when they love to cherry pick it, they're going to accept it. You know what Islam is, without lies, Islam dies. So they're going to cherry pick what is good for them, what does suit their agenda and whatnot. So let us go, let us give them the benefit of the doubt, guys. You know how we Christians are? You know how we Christians are? So let us go with this claim the mursal hadith the satanic verses are a mursal hadith that's what they said right the student of knowledge the muslims who call themselves students of knowledge they will say the satanic verses is a mursal hadith but wait do where, to where do you want to go i'm still here i'm going to bust you i'm going to, to bust your scholars wait now guys if as you know we did multiple live shows and i did not have access to the material that I have now, today that I'm going to present for the very first time. During that live show that we did on Brother Sam Sham on his YouTube channel, he invited me to talk about the satanic verses. And I also went to uh, Brother Al Fadi from Sira International. We did the live show there too, a similar one. And I did two live shows about Sahih, a Sahih Hadith, Turns out not to be a Mursal Hadith. That's Shaykh Al-Albani in his book called Mursal. Right? Shaykh Al-Albani, a modern Hadith expert, he is proven to be a deceiver and a liar. And even Muslim scholars say that uh, uh, Muhammad Nasruddin Al-Albani, Shaykh Al-Albani for short, makes some Hadith Sahih, they, they are Da'if, or some Da'if Hadith, they turn out to be 
صحيح افتر اول اني اني سويتش تو اي واز اي واز ميكينج مستيكس ان ذيم سو ماني سكولز ايفن كوندم هيم فور لاينج ذيس جاي ذات يو سي اون سكرين بات هيز ذا وان هو ميد The idea that the satanic verses in modern day, that the satanic verses are a Mursal Halib. He wrote a book. Nazb al-Majaniq fi al-Gharaniq. What is the entire, let me, let me get for you the, in, the entire title, guys, before Muslims are going to call me. You, you have no idea what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. What was his name? Nazb al-Majaniq. Yes. Nazb al-Majaniq li nasf qissat al-Gharaniq. That's his book title, right? Sheikh al-Albani wrote a book that we destroyed in our live shows. Guys, and if you want to learn about what we did to Sheikh al-Albani, how we buried him, go watch my live show about him. Write Rob Christian in YouTube. If you want to watch that uh, earlier live show, write Rob Christian dash satanic versus dash Sheikh Al Albani, you will you will see that live show about Sheikh Al Albani that we did. We prove that Sheikh Al Albani lied in his book. He made his book famous, right? He made his book f- famous by Sheikh Al Albani. Nasb al Majaniq fi fi sorry, Nasb al Majaniq li nasf qissa al Gharaniq. That book became huge in the Arab world. Remember, a couple of Muslims from. Pakistan, they went to Sheikh Albani and they said, you know what, there are some Christians who are really uh, became expert and they are attacking us and they are attacking our beloved prophet and they tell us that Muhammad delivered satanic verses. Please, Sheikh Albani, do something about it. And because of that, Sheikh Albani made his homework. He wrote a book and we gave you the book title to try to refute the satanic verses. Boy, oh boy. We proved the last time what kind of liar and deceiver he was. It turns out that the guy who, uh, that he was attacking, Al-Atshi, Al-Atshi was a tabi'i in the chain, turns out that the guy was a highly trustful guy. But Sheikh Al-Bani, he said, we do not know him. We have no idea who he is. We don't know if he's truthful or not. So he made him a John Doe. But later, it turns out that he even lied about it when he died. Right? He lied about the, 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 his death year. And he lied about that the guy was actually trustworthy. So we destroy him and we prove that he's a liar. All right. Now, guys, I want to play a short video clip from another modern scholar of today. All right. Another guy to give you an idea what's going on. When we talk about the satanic verses, what do Muslim scholars of today, modern scholars who are too embarrassed about their satanic prophet who delivered satanic verses to the Quraysh of Mecca, what do they say about the satanic verses? What do Muslim scholars of today say about it? Let me sp- play for you a small video clip to give you an idea. Now here is a sheikh called Sheikh Uthman, Sheikh Uthman Al-Khamis, not Uthman Ibn Farooq, no, no, not, not that idiot. No, a guy who is actually an Arabic scholar, right, an Arabic-speaking scholar from the Arab world by the name of Sheikh Uthman al-Khamis. Sheikh Uthman al-Khamis. Let us watch it and see what he said. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. ما أدري هي مشهورة عندكم أو لا ما أدري أنا لكن هي مشهورة في الكتب It's famous في كتب السيرة مشهورة جدا Very famous وعلى ما أظن أن الكثيرين منكم سمعوا بها يقينا وألول أكثر قرأوها uh, Christian Creed Christian Creed I really uh, respect it that you are here and you are watching our live show and others like you Why are you guys talking about all kind of topics Well we have a topic a huge nuclear of a topic that we're going to drop on the Islamic face of the Islamic Ummah. We're going to drop a nuclear bomb and you guys talk about all kind of do- different topics. Christian Creed, can you please, can you please focus? Admins, let us, since you, you guys cannot behave in the live chat, admins, anyone who goes outside of the topic, give him a timeout, I don't care, all right? Anyone who talks about different side topics, give him a timeout because simply it sees that even the Christians cannot behave. Okay? 
you Christians, if you can't behave, you're going to be time out too. All right. Now, focus. We do not hate anyone. Everybody's welcome. But please, today's live show is so damaging. This is why I want you to be focused. And Christians, this is also for you. It seems that not the Muslims cannot be, but you too. All right? Please. Please focus. طيب والبقية لم يسمعوا بها طيب قصة الغرانيق باختصار الغرانيق على ستانيك فرسز سورة right? من القرآن الكريم اسمها سورة النجم سورة النجم شابتر 53 وفي هذه السورة وهي سورة مكية Guys I want you to uh, remind one thing سورة سورة النجم شابتر 53 I want you to remind yourself that سورة النجم النجم سورة النجم is a Meccan surah, and I'm going to use this against Muhammad later on. Remember, chapter 53 was supposedly sent down from Allah through Jibreel to Muhammad when Muhammad was in Mecca. Did you catch it? Surah Al-Najm, chapter 53, is a Meccan surah. Remind yourself this because I'm going to use it against Muhammad. Just wait. وفي هذه السورة وهي سورة مكية وفي هذه السورة سورة. قول الله تبارك وتعالى أفرأيتم اللات والعزة ومنات الثالثة الأخرى Have you seen Have you seen اللات العزة and منات the other third one So these are the three daughters the three idols of the Quraysh the three daughters of Allah that the Quraysh used to worship So the Quraysh worshipped Allah but they had also intercessors the daughters of Allah اللات العزة والمنات the third one Did you catch it? What happened later? Yes. For you the males and you give me females? Allah doesn't like daughters, guys. Allah doesn't like women. He doesn't like to have daughters. He wants boys. That's what basically the eyes, the up following eyes are saying. You didn't memorize. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. تقول إن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما قرأ أفرأيتم اللات والعزة ومنات الثالثة yes. الأخرى تلك الغرانيق العلا وإن شفاعتهن لترتجى mm-hmm. هل يمكن أن يقول رسول Can the prophet say this? Can the prophet deliver satanic verses? These are the high غرانيق the cranes and their intercession is up for So guys what you see here on the screen in the subtitles this is the satanic verses the two verses here Immediately, verse 1 and verse 2, this is what Satan put on the tongue of Muhammad. These are the high exalted cranes, the gharaniq, and their intercession is hopeful. So that's what Satan put on the tongue of Muhammad. So the, the Shaykh, Shaykh Uthman al khamis this is the guy, that's his name. He said, can it be possible that Muhammad delivered satanic verses? This is our beloved prophet, how is this possible? Taja. هل يمكن أن يقول رسول هذا الكلام؟ كان محمد سيريس؟ صعب Difficult? ها؟ Of course ما تصير؟ مرة Are you sure? Are you sure محمد never did this? So this is basically the story in a nutshell guys نعم هكذا القصة This is the story أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قرأ أفرأيتم اللات والعزة ومنات الثالثة الأخرى تلك الغرانيق العلا وإن The satanic verses, yes Mm-hmm so the people of Mecca were shocked. They were surprised. Muhammad, what are you saying? First, you uh, you started to attack our idols, and now suddenly you are giving us verses that are supposedly from your God, saying beautiful stuff about our idols, about Allah al Uzza wal Manat. That doesn't make sense. But they accepted it, and they were happy. The Quraysh, the the idol worshippers, the family of Muhammad were happy with Muhammad. Because Muhammad just said beautiful stuff about their idols. Not knowing, not realizing that it was Satan, not Jibreel, who gave them the satanic verses. Did you catch it? The disbelievers How is it possible? Did you catch it? Yes, exactly. Starts to praise the idols. Without, you know, suddenly Muhammad is... Praising their idols. How is this possible? Can this be true? Can this 
story be authentic about our beloved Prophet Muhammad, ya Muslimin? يمدحه ويثني على هذا الثناء العطر تلك الغرانيق العلا وإن شفاعتهن لترتجى عندها سجد النبي uh-huh. After that the prophet prostrated he did sujood is an act of worship and the kuffar and the Quraysh of the Quraysh right? the kuffar of Quraysh they prostrated alongside with him they all became mushrikeen that day Muhammad and the sahaba too remember all of, all of them who were there became mushrikeen and they started to did prostration an act of worship to the idols sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sajad ma'ahu kuffar sajad sujood quraysh wa qalu awwal marra muhammad yamdahu and and the idol worshippers the quraysh said this is the first time that muhammad praises our idols our gods did you catch it alihatana fa sajadu ma'ahu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam hadhihi al qissa mawjuda fi kutub al sir ذكرها okay. أكثر بل كله فيما أعلم guys, focus, focus. وكتب في السيار ذكر هذه القصة من ذاكر لها على إطلاقها كذا منهم من يطلق يذكرها ويتعقبها ومنهم من يحذر منها ومنهم من يبطل كذبها وغير ذلك كثير mm. فالقصد أن هذه القصة okay. guys and here comes the disaster Now the Sheikh, this Fadila the Sheikh, Sheikh Uthman al-Khamis is going to lie and say that the story, look what he's saying anyways, the story itself has no correct isnad that proves that it, it happened. So he's basically rejecting the whole story, right? That's what is going on. This guy here, Sheikh Uthman al-Khamis, that's his name, he is rejecting the whole story that Muhammad delivered satanic verse and says that the isnad, the chain of narration is not correct, basically daif. من أساسها أولا ليس لها إسناد صحيح There is no إسناد صحيح Did you catch it? There is no صحيح إسناد There is no صحيح authentic chain of narration for it So basically he is calling it a rejected a ضعيف حديث ليس لها إسناد صحيح يعني آه. يثبت حدوث هذه القصة آه. هذا أمر الأول الأمر الثاني آه. أنه Did you catch it? من حيث المبدأ هل توافق ما كان عليه النبي مع كفار مكة وما كان عليه القرآن الكريم أم تخالف تخالف يقينا القرآن الكريم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا عبدوا ما تعبدوا وأنت so عبدوا guys, you see now we have a contradiction so basically if Muhammad delivered satanic verses and he worshipped and he started to worship those idols then we have a contradiction right because how could Muhammad then tell the, sh- the mushrikeen of Quraysh All oh, these believers, I do not worship what you worship. Remember chapter uh, Surah Al-Kafirun, chapter 109 of the Quran? I do, do not I do not worship what you worship, nor do you worship what I worship, and so on. And very funny, you know, very, very funny surah. Short but funny surah, right? So he's quoting a surah that is actually, actually abrogated by chapter 9. But anyway, that's a different topic for another day. So he's saying, you know, how is this possible? We have a contradiction else if Muhammad did that. So in a nutshell, the guy says, If we go back, the story on itself has a weak isnad. It's not sahih. Boy, oh boy, I'm going to spank him like I spanked Sheikh Al-Albani and I prove him wrong. From now on, guys, actually the live show starts. Why? You'll see why. From now on. Guys, and I want you to take a screenshot for the love of God. I want you to take a screenshot because... The, those two references, we're going to bring them up. And those two references here, reference one and reference two, reference one, reference two, both of them are sahih that I found. I started to read those books and I come to a shocking conclusion that the Muslim scholars like Sheikh, Sheikh Uthman al-Khamis that you saw here and Sheikh al-Albani and Fifi and Susu and Mumu and all of these today, all of them, one by one, They are nothing but liars and deceivers, and they are too embarrassed, so they have to lie. Boy, oh boy, if we take a deep dive in the Islamic book, what will happen, ya Sheikh Yasser Qadi? When you do a deep dive, yes. I'm a scuba diver. When you do a deep dive, I'm a scuba diver. Things get very, very awkward and difficult. When we take a huge dive as Christians in the Islamic books, when we take a huge dive in the Islamic books, 
things will become really awkward. And that's what I did. I took a huge dive. I took the advice of Sheikh Yasser Qadi. And when I took a d- deep dive, I came to the conclusion that now I have the knowledge to destroy this evil cult and the lies of this cult. Without lies, Islam dies, remember? Without the lies of the shiuch, Islam dies. So again, these are two references where we can find this same story, and it turns out that they are sahih. Let us start with reference number one. Adhur al-Manthur, in the in book page, in the book pages, pages 525 to 532, volume 10. So there are multiple volumes for this book. Adhur al-Manthur. By who? Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. The same guy who gives his tafsir, tafsir al for the Quran. Same guy. Another giant, right? It's a huge giant. Guys, Muslims cannot call him a liar. Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, who wrote Tafsir al in his other book called Adhur al-Manthur. In his book, let's see what he said. Are you ready, guys? I said, are you ready? I didn't hear you. I said, are you ready for reference number one, which, turn, which turns out to be a Sahih? Ready, guys? Let's go. Here is a Dhur al-Manthur, a Dhur al-Manthur by Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, who died in the year 911. Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. So a Dhur al-Manthur, Li Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. Do you see it? The Ar- Do we have any Arabic speakers? Uh, Nur al-Masih, Habibi. Can you say that I am correct about, can you confirm that the title that we are presenting is correct? Adhur al-Manthur, li Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. Okay. L-O-C, Nur al-Masih, he just gave me a one, which means he confirms that this is the right title. So I downloaded the book, guys, and uh, let me give you actually, you know what? Let me give you the download link. Sorry, guys, it's in Arabic. It's in Arabic, but let me give it to you anyway. Right? And maybe Muslims can download it too. Imagine this multi-volume book for free, very expensive book, for free to be downloaded. I downloaded it for free, and now I can use it. Guys, when I started to read this book, huge book, I found a shocking, shocking evidence that we can use against these liars and deceivers who call themselves modern scholars and modern apologists of today. Let us spank them one by one. Remember, because... Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he believed in the authenticity of the satanic verses. Ibn Hajar, as we mentioned earlier, also believed in the satanic verses to be true. So what can we find in Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, who wrote Tafsir al in his book here, what can we find? Now guys, this is again the reference, a dhur al-Manthur, a dhur al-Manthur, in page 525 to page 532, volume 10 by Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. So the writer of the book, Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. Take screenshots, take notes. If we go that, to that part, we see, we see we see in the book that the men in the narration are all trustworthy. Look, the Isnad, the narration, its men are trustworthy. Now, if we start to read and uh, LOC, LOC, the Nur al Masih, he can confirm in the live chat. From Ibn Abbas, he said that Allah's Messenger read the two ayahs that we can find in Surah Al Najm, Surah Al Najm, this one, ayah 19 and ayah 20, All right? Ayah 19 and ayah 20. Including the satanic verses. Watch. The Isnad. Its men are trustworthy. Bi'isnadin rijalahu thiqat. Bi'isnadin rijalahu thiqat. Now, Nur al-Masih, Habibi. L-O-C, Nur al-Masih, in the live chat, the admin. Please confirm that it says, the Isnad, its men are trustworthy. Confirm, please. The And I put a red line on uh, underneath it for you to see that the report, the following hadith, 
and it's not the people inside the chain are trustworthy. True, he says true. Thank you very much for your confirmation. Here, read with me. If you, uh, I know people don't know Arabic, but I'm going to read the Arabic. وأخرج البزار والطبراني وابن so and so and so and so and then it says the isnad the, the men inside the chain of the isnad are trustworthy صحيح من طريق so from the road or from the from, from the side of Saeed bin Jubair Saeed bin Jubair is in the chain highly trustworthy guy عن ابن Abbas the cousin of Muhammad حبر الأمة the cousin of Muhammad the ink of the Ummah ترجمان القرآن the Ibn Abbas the translator of the Quran Muhammad said go to him if you want to learn about the Quran the commentary about the Quran right عن ابن Abbas oh boy oh boy who Ibn Abbas himself قال so Ibn Abbas said إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so the the messenger of Allah he read he read, and then here we see the two ayahs of the Quran. Have you seen the third one, the other one, the third one? So after immediately after those two ayahs, which means those two ayahs, 19 and 20 from Surah Al-Najm, Muhammad starts to recite the Gharaniq. The Gharaniq, right? The Gharaniq. Here, this part here. Immediately, immediately, guys. The satanic verses. Muhammad gives the satanic verses. Do you see it? And then, if we continue reading, it says, the Mushrikeen of the Quraysh, right? The Mushrikun, they started to, to rejoice. They became really happy from that so after hearing beautiful words about their idols including the two ayahs from the Quran they became really happy and they said قَدْ ذَكَرَ إِلَهَتَنَا so uh, they said hey Muhammad is talking about our idols in a beautiful way and then Jibreel فَجَاءَهُ Jibreel then Jibreel came فَقَالَ اقرأ so read for me what you just recited, Ya Muhammad. So Jibreel came to spank Muhammad, and then Muhammad starts to read again. These are the exalted cranes, Muhammad starts to read after the two Quranic ayahs. And their intercession is hopeful. So Muhammad not still not knowing. Even Jibreel comes to spank Muhammad. Muhammad still recites satanic verses. What? And the Rijal, the people inside the chain are trustworthy. You see, this hadith is sahih. <laughs> Guys, this, sahih is, this hadith is sahih, right? <laughs> trustworthy. The, the people in the chain are trustworthy. So how can you say this is, this is fabricated? Ya Sheikh, Sheikh Albani. Yeah, Sheikh uh, 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 Khamis, how can you say this is, is, is rejected or daif? Or uh, the, the, the isnad is not sahih? How can you say that? Why are you lying? Why are you hiding? Remember, more than 90%. They hide. The scholars of today, they hide more than 90%. And this is one of those percents. And then Jibreel says, Jibreel starts to spank Muhammad says, I did not give you that. These are not my words, Ya Muhammad. These are the words of Satan. Jibreel is saying, Hadha min shaitan This is from Satan. Jibreel says, Jibreel says to Muhammad, This is from Satan, not from Allah. Wow! Jibreel confirms. <laughs> wow, guys. Allah, then Allah starts to send down, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيًا إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا إِلَىٰ آخر so to the rest of the eyes. So what is going on here? After Jibreel spanking Muhammad, after eight years, after eight years, Allah abrogates it. Why? Why, Rob? Remember when I said to you guys, remember, Surah, Surah Al-Najm, Al-Najm, Surah Al-Najm, is a Meccan Surah. Remember, Muhammad is still in Mecca. He has no army. He is uh, powerless. He has no army. He's getting persecuted by the Quraysh. 
because he started to attack their idols. Then later, Satan comes in between and he gives him satanic verses. Muhammad has no power. He cannot do anything, right? And he's, he's trying to reconcile, not knowing that he is going to be busted later, right? Surat al-Najm is Meccan, guys. Surat al-Najm is Meccan. But uh, Surat al-Hajj, this part here, Surat al-Hajj, Surat al-Hajj, chapter 22, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيًّا and so on, إِلَى آخِرِ الْآيَةِ to the rest of the ayah, is a Medina ayah, chapter, Medina ayahs, Medina chapter, Surat al-Hajj. So what, what is going on? Remember, I told you to remember, Surat al-Najm happens in Mecca. Muhammad receives satanic verses in Mecca. Later he goes to Medina. Let's say after eight years he goes to Medina and then he receives chapter 22. So basically the abrogation of chapter 53 where we can find the, uh, the satanic verses happened eight years after. Why Allah needs to wait eight years to abrogate the satanic verses in the Quran? Can you imagine in those eight years in those eight years, the satanic verses are still in the Quran. Guys, do you have any idea how damaging this is? The Quran, including the satanic verses for eight years? Yes. So after going to Medina, after eight years, Allah decides, now it's enough. After eight years, let us abrogate the satanic verses. Why? Because a Jew came to Muhammad and he bossed him. Hey, hey. When you were in Mecca, you gave the satanic verses, and you are in Medina, and still, still, there's no abrogation. Still, you are seeing uh, the satanic. Still, you are reciting the satanic verses. Then Muhammad says, "You know, I have to do something about this." Allah was slow. Yes, eight years, eight years. Remember, Surah Al Najm, including the satanic verses, was delivered in Mecca. But when Muhammad went to Medina, then Surah Al-Hajj came down supposedly from Allah. And then Allah decides enough is enough. After eight years, let us abrogate the satanic verses that are in Surah Al-Najm. After eight years, how many Muslim scholars will tell you this? Wow! Wow, wow, wow. Allah needs eight years to abrogate satanic verses. Yeah, it didn't happen, guys. The abrogation did not happen over one night. No, no. Don't allow any Muslim to lie to you guys. Wow. And guys, maybe you are hearing my son crying in the background. He's tired. I think it's time to sleep. But yeah. So let us continue anyway, guys. This is damaging, guys. This is damaging. And we showed you. We showed you. And Dhur al that the satanic verses are the, ch the people in the chain are highly trustworthy. You see, the men in the chain are highly trustworthy. Trustworthy. Now, this is really damaging. If we scroll down on the same page, look, guys, same page, page 525 for Surah Al Hajj, chapter 22, ayah 52. Two ayah. 55 so if we scroll down this is the page that i showed you right if we scroll down we see here more damaging stuff another hadith on the same page is the isnad is sahih look a, a, a different chain of narration right in this in this uh, in this time is uh, ibn jarir wa ibn al mundhir wa ibn abi hatim isnad sahih be isnad sahih so there are two different hadiths on this page. I forgot to tell you that. There are two different hadiths that are sahih. Wow. And here in the footer we can read. Again, the men in the chain are of that al-sahih. And this is uh, also can be found in Mujma' uh, al-Zawaid wa Manba' al-Fawaid. Volume 7, page 110. And also in Fath al-Bari, uh, page 439, volume 8. Wow. 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 Rijalah wa rijalah sahih. Look. Bisnad in sahih. Guys, two hadiths immediately after the another. 
Both of them are sahih. Now, guys, let us go back to the book. You see, this is the PDF book on the left. You see all the pages here. This is the book. And I gave you the link where you can download it. Let me give you the link again. If you are interested, maybe you know Arabic. Sorry, guys, I have no English translation. This is my own translation for you. This is the other hadith. You see, this is the first hadith that we mentioned. Right here. This is the first one. Bisnadin rijalu thiqat. So this hadith from here all the way to this this part here, which you see here, me making circles. Then the next hadith with a different chain, a different hadith, also sahih. We scroll down. It says here uh, that Sa'id bin Jubair qala, he said, Qara'a Rasulullah, so, uh, Allah's messenger, he read when he was in Mecca, be Mecca, Surat Al-Najm, the Surat Al-Najm, chapter 53. Falamma balagha, when he reached hadha, uh, so this topic or, or this this part chapter 53 ayas 19 and 20 do you hear it Satan cast down on his tongue Satan cast down on the tongue of Muhammad guys are you following yes I, I know it's Arabic but I'm translating Satan cast down on his tongue. On whose tongue? On Muhammad's tongue. Meaning these are the exalted cranes and their intercession is up for. So these two satanic verses, Muhammad not realizing that it's Satan who is casting down on his tongue. And Muhammad delivers the satanic verses to the Quraysh. Right, and then we continue read that uh, the Quraysh, the Meccan Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad, they start to be really happy, and they say, "Hey, this never happened. Muhammad, Muhammad is now saying beautiful stuff about our, our idols." And then he prostrated, fasajada wasajadu. He prostrated. He did sujud, act of worship to the idols, and all of them they did sujud, fasajada. Muhammad did sujud, fasajada. And they did sujood. And then uh, the story continues. Then Jibreel comes and he starts to abrogate and spank Muhammad. Chapter 53, uh, sorry, uh, chapter 22, this ayah abrogates the satanic verses. Chapter 22, Surah Al Hajj, ayah 52. To the rest of the ayah. Did you catch it, guys? Did you catch it? So, over and over we find in the same book, Sahih Hadiths. Sahih Hadith. Not one, but two. The first one here. The, uh, another Hadith. This num Hadith number one where all the men are trustworthy, and the second hadith immediately, another second hadith, where the, the isnad is sahih, the people in the chain, the narrators, are sahih. Wow! So how do they say, how dare Muslim, modern Muslim scholars today, the modern Muslims, who are too embarrassed about the fact, how do they lie? Do you now see how they lie to their audience? Lying from the back of their teeth. Guys, we are dropping nuclear bombs here. I hope that you, and I hope that you are realizing how damaging today's live show is, guys. I want you to take small video clips about today's live show later, guys. Record small video clips, put subtitles on underneath it. And show all the Muslims how the satanic verses from the Islamic books confirming that they are sahih. We showed you two different hadith from, again, from Adhur al-Manthur by Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti. The same guy who wrote Tafsir al -Jalanin. Again, this reference on top. This reference on top. This is the first reference, right? This is the book. Before Muslims like Ibn Fibin will tell us, Rob Christian, you and David Wood, you are all Google scholars. No, we have the actual book. We download the book. We read the book, as you see. We read the Arabic. 
there is no uh, lies left anymore. No excuses for you to use, yeah, uh, Sheikh Ibn Fibin, all of you, you filthy liars. You see how Muslim scholars today are too embarrassed and they need to lie to the Muslims who do not know Arabic. But thanks to the Lord, we have someone like me, Rob Christian, who can bust Allah and his satanic prophet Muhammad. And remember, Allah is Satan. Allah and Satan are the same guy. Sometimes he calls himself Allah, sometimes he calls himself Satan in the Quran. Uh, it's a mess. This cult is a mess. And Muhammad kept busting himself over and over and over again. This is damaging, man. Satanic verses turn out to be sahih. But the Muslim scholars of today are lying. They hide so many damaging facts. You have no idea, guys. The only thing to find it out is by reading. Do you see why I always say knowledge is key to destroy this evil cult of Satan? Knowledge, reading Islamic books will shock everybody. I hope you are shocked today about the evidence that we are presenting for, you for the very first time on my YouTube channel. This is the first time that I'm bringing this material for you guys. Sorry, I cannot give you an English translation because these books are not translated yet. The moment they are going to be translated, it's going to, huge, a, to, to, to create a huge chain reaction in the Islamic world. Just watch the moment there is going to be someone who is translate these books, it's going to cause a huge nuclear bomb. And I'm the first guy who brings this in the English section of YouTube, as you see. You won't find this information anywhere, guys. I'm the first guy. Yeah, uh, I'm trying, you know, guys, um, God forbid, God forbid, I'm not trying to do this for fame or money. God forbid, may God silence me if, if I'm doing that. But I'm doing this for everybody to wake everybody up about the satanic verses. To show the Muslims of today how their scholars, modern scholars, lie. But when we go to the classical scholars and their books, we find out that the Isnad, the chain of narration about the satanic verses, is highly trustworthy, highly sahih. Right? Highly trustworthy. And again, we can find this in reference number two, and we are going to uh, put it later on the screen. Majma' al-Zawaid, Majma' al-Zawaid wa manba' al-Fawaid by al-Haythami. Majma' al-Zawaid wa manba' al-Fawaid in volume 7 by al-Haythami. By al-Haythami. Another sheikh, another scholar, a huge scholar in Sunni Islam. Now guys, now I'm going to show you what Muslim scholars do and how they deceive the ummah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how Muslim scholars today are deceiving the Ummah. How, Rob? If we go to the same book, guys, the same book of Jalalain here, if we go to page 526, look in the Arabic here, ch chapter, oh, sorry, uh, page 526, same book, same book, and we scroll down here on this page, we see, let's see, uh, I hope I... <clears throat> Where did I put it, guys? Just give me, give me, give me uh, so, some time. I need to find this part where it says, "Okay, here." Sorry, page five hundred twenty-seven, if I'm not mistaken. Page five hundred twenty-seven. Am I correct? Am I correct? Yes. Uh, so, what do modern scholars like uh, Sheikh Al Sheikh Al uh, uh, Uthman uh, Al Khamis says? They go to page five hundred twenty-seven, for example, same book, again for Surah Al Hajj. Uh, is uh, 52 to 55, they scroll down and they see here, this other hadith, guy, this other hadith here, there's another hadith that says, Mursal Sahih Isnad. So if I give my translation for this page, for that part, page 527, you see it? Same page, I only took a screenshot. We go down, this is another uh, uh, hadith guide with a different narration different chain, different people, so totally different hadith. This hadith is a mursal sahih al-isnad. Do you see it? Mursal. So they say this is mursal. We reject it. Did you catch what they are doing? They go to a different, let me type it out. The scholars of the day, the Muslim scholars who know Arabic and uh, they know how to deceive, the scholars of today, they go to a 
different hadith like this one here. And they say, look, 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 the satanic verses is a mursal. They say it's mursal, right? Mursal sahih al-isnad. Since it's mursal, there is a gap. There is a gap but in, the, in the chain. We reject it. That's what they do. But they are talking about a different one. Not the hadiths that we showed you, right? Let me go back to, to, to try to show you what I'm talking about. This is a different hadith. Do you see it? This hadith is sahih. Based on sahih. So this is not mursal. On top, the first one that we showed you, this is not that the people are trustworthy. So we showed you three different hadith. Number one is highly trustworthy. The second one is sahih. But the third one on page 527, this one is Mursal. Totally different one. Right? Totally different one. This one. Totally different one. On page 527. Now, do you see their mind games? Do you see how they use trickery? The first two, the first two hadiths are Sahih. The third one on page uh, 527, the third one is Mursal. So there are multiple hadiths and they pick and choose which one suits their agenda. You know what? Since there we can find one, let us deceive our Muslim audience who do not read the Islamic books. Let us deceive them by bringing up a totally different hadith that is actually Mursal. Wow! So they cherry pick? Yes. They cherry pick hadith that are actually Mursal to deceive their Muslim audience. They don't quote the Sahih ones. They do not quote the Sahih ones. Oh boy, and that's what is going on. That is go what's going on, guys. Wow. They quote other hadiths while they do not bring up and hide the Sahih ones. Yes, that's, that is basically what I'm trying to tell you guys. Wow. And Nur al-Masih is reading along and he sees what I'm seeing. Thank you for the confirmation, LOC, Nur al-Masih. And admin, admin just confirmed he knows Arabic. So we showed you three different ones from page 500. Page 525 to 527. But to 532, the story is continued mentioning, all right? They continue mentioning it in the other... All the way down. Look how many hadith that are sahih. But they only pick one from this book that is da'if. Only one. The others are all sahih. <laughs> <laughs> they only pick this one. But we, we will ask the following question. Why are you not bringing up the two different hadith that are sahih that confirm the satanic verses? Again, this is why we always say, without lies, Islam dies. Wow. Now, guys, let us go to the, a different book. We mentioned, again, we mentioned that I found two references, two different books that confirm the satanic verses. Let us go to reference number two, which is the book of Al-Haythami. Take a screenshot. The book of Al-Haythami in Majma Al-Zawaid wa Manba Al-Fawaid. Volume 7, page 115. In book page 115. I again downloaded the book. I again downloaded. You see, this is a book, right? Here is the front cover. Right? Manba al Fawaid. Sorry, Majma al Zawaid wa Manba al Fawaid by al Haythami. A Jiz al Saba. The volume 7. Volume 7. Majma al Zawaid wa Manba al Fawaid by al Haythami. Right? Let me give you the link to this book too. So even Muslims can download this book. You can download this book. Uh, let's see. You can download this book again for free. I want to thank our Lord and Savior for the internet. Because the internet, guys, turns out to be a huge weapon in our hands. Here is the link again. Oh, I see. I see that I need to create a short, shorter link. 
Does this link work, uh, guys, uh, admins? Does it work? Or should I make a tiny URL link? Let's see if we can make one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Make tiny URL. Copy. Okay. Uh, if you click on the link admins, do you see the page? And if you go down, you see the download. Uh, it opens. Okay, perfect. So now you have access to this book too. Guys, just bear with me. Someone is calling me on my phone. Let me send them a message, a quick message. Uh, uh, I am doing a live show. Just a second. All right. So he'll stop calling me. Okay. Again, the book title is Majma al Zawaid wa Manba al Fawaid, Volume 7, Ajiz al Sabi, Volume 7, page 115. Page 115. You see, page 115. You see the thing here uh, on the right looks like a zero, our zero. But when you, when you have this round thing here, it's a five. So one, one, five. And I try to uh, make it easy for you. I put here on the, I took a screenshot of the book, uh, of this page, and I put this for you to make it clear, okay? Page 115. Page 115. If we go to this page and we scroll down. Same hadith, same report, and it says here, وَرِجَالَهُ رِجَالَ الصَّحِيحِ وَرِجَالَهُ رِجَالَ الصَّحِيحِ So this hadith here on top is sahih. The men in the chain are sahih. Did you catch it? This is why I put it here. Majma' al-Zawad wa Manba' al-Fawad, page 115, volume 7 by Al-Haythami. Take a screenshot. These are the main references, guys, for the... For the satanic verses that us Arabic speaking Christians go to to refute the lying and deceiving Muslim scholars of today. Rob Christian, you do not know Arabic, Rob. Your Arabic is very daif, Rob. Yeah. This is why I can read the classical books of your most classical scholars out there. Yeah, Muslimin. Yeah. Keep lying, Fi Sabil Muhammad. Page 115. You see it? If we uh, go there, we can find again. That uh, let's see. Let me start reading from the correct part here. An Ibn Abbas, and then we see Said bin Jubair in the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam kana bi Mecca. So he was in Mecca. Muhammad was in Mecca. فقرأ سورة النجم. So he started to read chapter fifty-three of the Quran, سورة النجم, chapter fifty-three. So Muhammad starts to read till he reached. أَفْرَأَيْتُ مَلَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّ وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةُ الْأُخْرَى Which one? This ayah. وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةُ الْأُخْرَى Thank you very much, Rob. Yes. There, <laughs> when he reached there and he started to read, فَأَفْرَأَيْتُ مَلَّاتَ الْعُزَّ وَالْمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةُ الْأُخْرَى Then uh, Satan starts to cast down on his lisan, لِسَانِهِ تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَى Satanic verses. Uh oh. And as we showed you, it's Sahih. Rijal, the people in the men in the chain are Sahih. <laughs> and then it says, He called for Sama, Bidalika, Mushrik, Mushriku, Ahl, Mecca. So the Mushrikin of Mecca, the Quraysh. The tribe of Muhammad, uh, the idol worshippers, they heard of this and they were really happy and became really heavy on Muhammad. فَاشْتَادَ عَلَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ Then later, Allah, the Most High, Allah فَتَبَارَكَ Allah فَتَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى Allah the Most Blessed and the Most High وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيًّا إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانَ فِي أَمْنِيَتِهِ فَيَنْسَخُ اللَّهُ مَا يُلْقِي الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَى آخِرِ الْآيَةِ To the rest of the ayah. So Allah brings down chapter 22, ayah 52 to abrogate it after eight years. As we showed you, right? After eight years. Wow. 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 And then we see here, we see here that... Uh, Allah abrogates it, and this is from Al-Bazzar and Al-Tabarani, and so on and so on. And we see 
وَرِجَالَ وَرِجَالَ الصَّحِيحَ So guys, I had some time when I was creating the slides and I gave my own personal translation. So I want you to take a couple screenshots of this page. This is my own personal translation, guys. There is no translation out there for this book, let alone this page, page 115 of مَجْمَعَ الزَّوَائِدْ وَمَنْبَعَ الْفَوَائِدْ by الْهَيْثَمِي This is my translation, guys. Take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. Couple of screenshots because I put a lot of time, guys, to translate it. This is my own personal translation. Let me go. Scroll down. This is my translation, guys. Read with me. And Allah the Most High said, Have you seen Allah al Uzza wal Manat when Muhammad starts to recite Surat and Najm from Ibn Abbas and in the chain, the Tabi'i Sa'id ibn Jubair, that the Messenger of Allah when he was in Mecca, then he started to read Surat and Najm, chapter 53, till he reached, Have you seen Allah and Al Uzza wal Manat, the other one, the third Manat? the three bird idols of the Quraysh, and then on his tongue was revealed, so from Satan, on his tongue was revealed, these are the exalted cranes, the Gharaniq, and their intercession is hoped for. Thilka al-Gharaniq al-Ula, Satan said to Muhammad on his tongue, Thilka al-Gharaniq al-Ula, wa inna shafa'atahunna laturtaja. So what are the satanic verses? These words in green, guys, are the satanic verses. Two verses from Satan. Muhammad not realizing that it's Satan, it's not Allah's revelation on his tongue from Jibreel. And then when we continue reading, it says, He said, Then the Mushrikeen of Mecca, Quraysh, heard this. They started to talk about it and became really heavy, became really hard or difficult for the Messenger of Allah. Then Allah the Blessed and the Most High, and all, and he starts. Then he starts to abrogate the uh, this, uh, the satanic verses. And all the noble messengers, chapter twenty-two, ayah fifty-two. And all the noble messengers or prophets whom we sent before you, it occurred with all of them that whenever they recited the message, let's say the Quran or the Injil or the Zabur, the Psalms or the Torah, Satan included a bit from his own speech in their recitation to the people. So Muhammad, because he know he was busted. He was busted. He need to lie about all the prophets. According to Muhammad, all the prophets received satanic revelation. Can you imagine? All the prophets of Allah, not our prophets, all the prophets of Allah received satanic verses. And Allah needs to wake up after many years and he need to abrogate them. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> And this is the report from Al-Bazar and Al-Tabarani, as you see here. The men in the chain are of the men of a sahih Please, for the love of God, take screenshots, guys. If you missed today's live show, I, read, I really advise you to re-watch it because the meat that we are presenting in front of you is really, really damaging. And this is the first time, this is a premiere for, for me, for you guys, for the very first time to present these References the, the proof that the satanic verses are sahih. Boom! <laughs> Did you catch it, guys? How many hadiths did we show you? At least three, right? Two from the book of Al Suyuti and one from Al Haythami that is on the screen in front of you, right? Al Haythami, Majma al Zawad, wa Manba al Fawad. Page 115, volume 7, Al Haythami. And we showed you from Al Dhur al Manthur by Jalal al Din al Suyuti from his book on volume, in volume 10, page 525, uh, to the rest of the chapters after that. So, two references, not one, but two. Damaging, damaging, guys. So damaging. And if we scroll down, guys, if I go back to the uh, last page, if I go to the last page. This is again what Muslim scholars do, guys. They go to this part here and it says and it says here وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمْ هَا حَدِيث وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمْ حَدِيث مُرْسَل Do you hear it? مُرْسَل Again, مُرْسَل وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمْ حَدِيث مُرْسَل And another hadith was brought up that is مُرْسَل فِي سُورَةَ الْحَجْ Regarding Surah Al-Hajj أطول من هذا 
Uh, so there is another hadith more longer than this hadith here that we just read for you, which is Mursal. So what do uh, the shiyukh, what do this, the ustaz, what do the scholars of today do? They go to Mursal hadith and say, look, look, the satanic verses are abrogated. But they do not bring up the highly trustworthy one, the sahih ones, this one. So they go to the Mursal ones to lie to the ummah. Yes, there are multiple, guys, there are multiple hadiths, multiple reports about the satanic verses. Some of them are Mursal. I'm typing it out for you guys. Some of them are Mursal, right? Where you have a gap between the Tabi'i and Muhammad. So the Tabi'i, the successor of the Sahaba, the companions, they skip, for example, they don't mention the companion. So we have a gap. So what do they do? What do the Muslim scholars of today do to lie and deceive? They go to Mursal Hadith. So to make it easier for you guys, I put this also in the footer. You see, this is my own translation for that part. And also another hadith was brought up, which is a Mursal Hadith mentioned for Surat Al-Hajj. Longer than this one that you see here on top. Other, other one, right? A longer version. Than this one, meaning the above one, this one. But the chain, the isnad is da'if. Right? And if we continue your reading, في سورة الحج أطول من هذا ولكنه ضعيف الإسناد ضعيف الإسناد. So another one is da'if. So that's what they do. They go to another hadith and they say, look, look, satanic verses da'if, brother. So that's what they do. But they don't bring up the sahih ones. Do you understand what is going on, guys? The Muslim scholars bring up only the Aif hadith, but they don't bring up the Sahih ones that will embarrass them and their fraud satanic prophet. <laughs> Did you catch it? Guys, I hope you are caught. I know it's this is a lot of meat and it can be really difficult for people to, to grasp what I'm trying to say. If you are missing what I'm trying to say, you really need to rewatch this live show and then take notes for you to become things for you to become clear. If you are a Muslim and you have any dignity in you, you have honesty in you, you really need to leave Islam. How can Muhammad claim that there is only one God, but at the same time he delivers satanic verses? And we proved it today. Wow! So what do Muslim scholars do? They go to different hadith and bring up the daif ones only. They don't talk about the sahih ones. You see this one here above is sahih. The men in the chain are of the men of a sahih. This is Islam, guys. This is Islam 101. This is the deception of Islam. They bring up different hadith that are daif. Brother, this daif, we don't accept it, brother. But what about the sahih ones? No, no, we don't mention those. We don't like to mention those because it will embarrass us and it will bury our fake satanic Prophet Muhammad that very day became a prophet of Satan because he delivered the satanic verses. And guys, I wanted to mention to you that for eight years, for eight years, the satanic verses stayed in the Quran. Used to be between chapter 53, ayah 20 and 21, here in the middle. Between ayahs 20 and 21, after eight years, after eight years, when Muhammad leaves Mecca and he goes to Medina in Surat Al-Hajj, when Surat Al-Hajj comes down supposedly, in Medina, when Muhammad is in Medina, the abrogations happen. So for eight long years, the satanic verses were in the Quran. The answer is yes. <laughs> Wow! Allah needs to wait eight years to finally take the step to wake up and abrogate the satanic verses that were eight years in the Quran. Why eight years wrong? Because Surah An Najm, remember, was sent down in Mecca. When Muhammad left Mecca, he went to Medina. Still, the satanic verses were in the Quran. After eight years. Allah decides to abrogate the satanic verses in Surah Al-Najm. 
But we know, we know there is nothing called Allah. It's always been Satan. And Muhammad, after getting busted by Jews, hey, yeah, Muhammad, you're saying to us, yeah, Muhammad, you're saying to us that uh, 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 that you are talking about one God. That's what the Jews used to say, right? You're talking about one God, but we see satanic verses in Surah Al-Najm. So there was a Jew, guys. I kid you not. There was a Jew by the name of Hujjaj ibn al-Akhtab who busted Muhammad in Medina and told him, Ya Muhammad, why are satanic verses in your Quran? And Muhammad, after getting busted by a Jew, he had to abrogate his own Quran. He had to abrogate the satanic verses. After eight years, imagine if a Jew did not come to Muhammad. Imagine if Hujjaj ibn al-Akhtab did not come to Muhammad, a Jew, the satanic verses would be in the Quran until today. Every time a Jew busts Muhammad, um, Muhammad needs to abrogate verses. Every time Muhammad fabricates something or forgets an ayah, Allah needs to send down a similar one or abrogates uh, the, 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 former, the, the, the earlier ayah with a better one, like this one. Can you imagine? Jews must help Muhammad to correct his satanic Quran. Wow! A Jew again? A Jew is helping Muhammad? Yes. And I gave you the name of the Jew. Always the Jews, always the Jews, always the Jews. Guys, what is my final conclusion? What is my final conclusion? If there is something called authentic in Islam, then the most authentic historical proof are the satanic verses in the life of Muhammad. This is the final conclusion that I have to take because we find at least three different ahadith, three different hadiths that are sahih about the satanic verses. And only one that I found in the book that we showed you, only one is Mursal. Right? Only one. Here, this one. Do you see it? This one is Mursal. Mursal, Sahih al, sahih al Isnad. This one. Do you see it? And another one, which is not mentioned, which is not mentioned here, there's, uh, according to, in the in the book of uh, Al-Haythami here, right, there is another one that is longer, that has a, that, that is a longer version, has a da'if isnad, but he's not saying which one. He's not saying which one hadith that is, right? So, there are two, according the books that we read until now. Two, Mursal, which, <laughs> one of them is da'if, one of them is Daif and the other one is Mursal. One is one of them is Daif al Isnad and another one was Mursal. Remember? A Daif and a Mursal. But at least three were Sahih. Three were Sahih. Again, let me give you the references that from the books that we found. Book Adhur al Manthur, take a screenshot. Book Adhur al Manthur, page 525 to 532. Volume 10 by Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, who wrote Tafsir al-Jalalain in his book, and reference number two, Majma' al-Zawaid, wa Manba' al-Fawaid, page 115, volume 7 by al-Haythami. Man, oh man, today's live show is really a nuclear bomb on the faces of the Muslims, on the face of the Ummah, proving that the Satanic Verses is a highly authentic historical event in the life of Muhammad. And do you now understand why Ibn Taymiyyah believed in it? In the beginning of the last show, guys, I showed you what Ibn Taymiyyah thought. Ibn Taymiyyah believed that the incident, and even the early Muslims, the Salaf, who we call the Salaf, they believed in the authenticity of the Satanic verses. And that's what Ibn Hajar also believed. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, if you go to his Fath al-Bari, even he believed that the reports about the satanic verses are authentic. Guys, and I'm going to put um, and I'm going to put the, the names of the books also in the description box later. And I think uh, Phil Herrera can do that too in the comment section. 
And again, if you did missed what a Mursal Hadith is, just rewatch today's live show and you will understand that the Mursal Hadith is basically when a successor, a follower of the companion, skips a companion of Muhammad. So the Tabi'i skips a, a Sahabi. And because there is a gap now, we Muslims call it Mursal Hadith. And that's basically how the science of Hadith works. You know, Muslims are proud about the science of Hadith. Like a brother Tony King, he mentioned it in the beginning of the live show. I told him, be patient, brother. We're going to explain everything. And this is how the science of Hadith works. They call it with a really uh, 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 rich, rich wording. Science of Hadith, brother. But when it suits them, they're going to reject the Sahih ones and present only the Da'if or Mursal ones to bring up their argument. To suit their agenda, they cherry pick what is Da'if. They leave out the Sahih because it embarrasses the Ummah. It embarrasses and buries Muhammad deep 10 feet under the ground, proving that he's a fake satanic prophet. And to hide, to hide this disaster for from the Muslims who don't read their books. Now, do you understand? Let's say you are a Muslim who doesn't read books. You go to the YouTube channel of Fifi, to the YouTube channel of uh, Sheikh uh, Uthman al khamis and they lie to you. How do they lie to you? Again, let us go back again. How do they lie to you? Let us play that part again. Because I think it's really important for everybody to, to understand what's going on. If we go back a little, go back to that part. Good. Look. ولا يجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقية ولا محرومة قصة. The story. ما أدري هي مشهورة. Yeah, he's going to talk about the satanic. This is Sheikh. لكن هي مشهورة. أثمان شيخ الخميس. في كتب السيرة مشهورة جدا. وعلى ما أظن أن الكثيرين منكم سمعوا بها يقينا. وأول أكثر قرأوها. وهي قصة تسمى بقصة الغرانيق. Yeah, the satanic version. الذي سمع بها فقط أو قرأها. أو سمع عنها يرفع يده بس فقط حتى أعرف طيب والبقية لم يسمعوا بها طيب قصة الغرانيق باختصار تعلمون أن سورة من القرآن الكريم اسمها سورة النجم وفي هذه السورة وهي سورة مكية وفي هذه السورة قول الله تبارك وتعالى أفرأيتم اللات والعزة exactly. ومنات الثالثة الأخرى then Satan comes بعدين شنو ها ألكم الذكر أكيد الله doesn't like daughters هف محافظين ألكم الذكر Muslims don't know yeah of course Muslims don't know هذه القصة تقول خلاف ذلك تقول إن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما قرأ أفرأيتم اللات والعزة ومنات الثالثة الأخرى تلك الغرانيق العلا وإن شفاعتهن لترتجى أها the satanic verses هل يمكن أن يقول رسول هذا الكلام Can Muhammad say this صعب Difficult, right? <laughs> it's not possible for Muhammad to deliver satanic verses? No, of course not. I mean, then Muhammad becomes this, the prophet of Satan, not Allah. So you see how he's laughing. He knows it's uh, sahih. But now he's going to say it's da'if. Watch. Look how evil this man is. He knows about the sahih reports that we showed you today with crystal clear evidence. But he's going to lie and use the mursal da'if one. Watch. No. <laughs> هكذا القصة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قرأ أفرأيتم اللات والعزة ومنات الثالثة الأخرى تلك الغ... ديكوز ديكوز I think you really, really need to watch rewatch today's live show you really need to rewatch today's live show because we already showed everybody what kind of lies they use they use the da'if hadiths but they don't mention the sahih hadiths about the satanic verses that's what is happening in a nutshell. Yes, of course. Yeah, first he used to attack their idols. Later, he brings them the satanic verses and he say, says beautiful stuff about their idols. We have a contradiction here, right? Suddenly, Muhammad becomes a mushrik. في لحظة هكذا in one moment, وبدون مقدمات يمدحوا هذا ويمدحوا ويثني على هذا الثناء العطر تلك الغرانيق العلا وإن شفاعتهن لترتجى عندها سجد النبي 
Muhammad, you see, Muhammad became a mushrik and he starts to do an act of worship. Prostration, sujood is an act of worship. So Muhammad became a mushrik. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Watch guys, now watch what he's going to say, watch. Watch what he's going to say. Man katiba fi siyar, dhakar hadihi al-qissa. Min dhakir allaha, ala itlaqi haakada, min hum man yutliqo, yadhkuruha, wa yata'aqabuha. You see how he's struggling guys? Do you see how he's struggling? Uh, he knows there are sahih ones, but he's going to talk about the daif ones. Yata'aqabuha, wa min hum man yuhadhiru minha, wa min hum man yubtilu kathibaha, wa ghayra dhalika, كثير فالقصد ان هذه القصه ضعيف من اساسها اولا ليس لها اسناد صحيح اها ات بروفز ذات ذير از نو اسناد صحيح بوي بوي توداي وي شود ايفريبادي وات كايند اوف لاير يو ار اني مسلم سكولر اني ابولوجيست يو ار اونلي برينجينج اس ذا ضعيف وانز ذا مرسل وانز بات واي ار يو نوت توكينج اباوت ذا حديث ذات ار صحيح از وي شود يو توداي Now, do you understand what they are doing, guys? They are cherry picking. Yes, there are Mursal. Yes, there are Daif Hadiths about the Satanic verses as we showed you today. But what about the Sahih ones? They don't bring up the chains that are Sahih. The chains that are Sahih. The Hadiths that are Sahih. Why? And you see how he was struggling because eh, he's thinking in his back of the mind, uh, my audience, remember the audience here who are sitting around him, they are poor, illiterate Muslims, guys. Honest to God, they don't know what is going on. So they only listen, they only listen and they go to their house. They don't investigate. Hey, may, could this sheikh be lying to us? They don't investigate. They only accept everything he says. Brother, he's a sheikh. He, he must know what he's talking about. Not realizing Guys, these Muslims not realizing what deception the Sheikh is using. He is deceiving them and they are swallowing his deception. Right? Nothing but deception, guys. And again, like we always will say, without lies, Islam will die. Without the lies of these shiuch, filthy liars, sons of Satan, Islam will never ever die without their lies if they don't lie islam will stay alive but if they stop lying islam will die definitely imagine if this sheikh will say come up and say hey you know what you know what there are at least three different hadith that are authentic about the satanic verses what will the audience that are surrounding him will say let's say i'm the sheikh i'm sheikh uthman al-khamis yeah ya akhwan oh brethren ya akhwan Today I'm going to mention the Sahih Hadiths about the Satanic verses. Imagine the chain reaction after that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> And that's what they don't do. They will hide the 90% because remember, if the Muslims will find out the truth about the life of Muhammad, what will happen then? Most Muslims will become apostates, right? So again, ya Muslimin, we have at least two dislikes. If you really care about the truth, ya Muslimin, I want you to think twice again. Why are my scholars using Daif Hadith? Why are they talking about Mursal Hadith when regarding the Satanic verses? Why don't they bring up the Sahih ones that we showed today? Why? Why? Look, this is Sahih. We showed you Sahih. We showed you Sahih. We showed you from the books that it's Sahih. Do you see it? From two different books, three different Sahih hadiths. Any Muhammadan guys? Do we have any Muhammadan? I would like to have a call. I will open Skype now, guys. And I would like to, uh, love to have a call with a Muslim. Uh, so Leo Ace Augustine, if you're watching, you need to send me a message. Uh, I think he's a Christian. He says, Rob Christian, I'm looking for Christian Prince's Skype. 
Do I look like the secretary or the assistant of Christian Prince to give you that information? Really, bro? Oh, boy. <sighs> oh, boy. Any Mohammedan? Is there any Mohammedan who can come up and prove to everybody that Rob Christian is a liar? I would love to be spanked like uh, I'm spanking your prophet. Is there any Mohammedan out there who can refute me on this topic? Maybe Rob Christian doesn't know Arabic. Any Mohammedan? Uh, Noor al Masih Habibi, LOC. Did you like today's live show? Did you enjoy today's live show? I mean, you're an Arabic speaker. You must have watched the live show with a lot of popcorn and Pepsi. I hope you had a lot of Pepsi, brother. Pepsi, you know Pepsi, we say Pepsi. And I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and guys, Christians, I really need to take to ask you to take snippets, small video clips of today's live show and upload it on YouTube or at least allow this live show today to go viral. I know a lot of Christians are lazy. I'm not calling you lazy, guys, but I know a lot of other Christians are lazy. Why? Why are most Christians watching Christian Prince? And Christian Prince won't do this, guys. Christian Prince will go to the Quran and maybe to Hadith. He doesn't know do what I do. I don't think Christian Prince has time to do what I do. And by, you know, by accident, because my PC died the other day, I had some time to download and read these books. Right? So if Christian Prince doesn't do what I do, I have to do it. Which means that you need to download also my videos. A lot of Christians, you know, let me download immediately the videos of Christian Prince because I know Christian Prince will delete his videos because, you know, most of the time they will attack or flag his videos. But what about Rob Christian? I mean, Christian Prince, yes, he's a one-man army, but we will not talk about all the topics, right? So, basically, the Christian apologists who know Arabic like me and the Christian Prince, we fulfill each other, guys. We are basically one team, right? What the other Christian apologists don't mention or talk about during his live show, the other one must do to fill those tiny gaps that are really important too, as you see, right? So it's not only Christian Prince that you need to download and share his videos, but also my videos, guys. Because how many Christian apologists can you count on your finger who know Arabic and can bring what I bring to you? And guys, I'm not trying. I'm your humble servant. God forbid. But you really need to support what we do and, and share our videos. And if you guys want me to read more, vid uh, sorry, more books and find more damaging stuff, then please, please, if you can, if you can, allow me to go full time. I'm really waiting for a day to go full time so I can do this more. I can um, focus on more books, read more books to destroy this evil cult. And I hope by then, that many Christians will download our videos, share our videos, allow our videos to go viral. And maybe we'll, there will be a time that not only 160 people will watch, but even more than 1,000 viewers. I, I really pray to my God. For some reason, people don't bring the numbers up that a uh, Christian prince can raise. And I wonder why. Why Christians only watch Christian prince? Why David would? Can David would do what we do? No, of course not. He doesn't know Arabic. And again, guys, God forbid, I'm not doing this for any fame or uh, money. God forbid, may God silence me if I'm doing that. But I'm only doing this because nobody else is doing this, what we do. At least in the English section. But our Arabic-speaking friends in the Arabic section of YouTube on TikTok, they do bring these topics up. But it seems I'm the first one, guys, regarding this very topic here. This is the first time, guys, that I'm bringing up this material for you. Translating it for you, bringing up the references in English shop because they are only in Arabic, right? And I even gave you the links to the books that you can download in Arabic. But since you don't know Arabic, most of you don't know Arabic, we have to do this through a live show like today, right? And I, like I said, my final conclusion if there is something called authentic in Islam, then the most authentic historical proof are the satanic verses in the life of Muhammad. Thank you, uh, guys. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your kind words. A lot of people, guys, who do not know me, 
or maybe they are new to my YouTube channel, they will ask themselves, hey, why Rob Christian sounds like Christian Prince? First of all, it's an honor for me if you think that I sound like Christian Prince. But what you don't know about me is that I'm doing this for at least 15 years. And I'm not trying to brag, brag guys, God forbid, but we are doing this for many years. I started, my problem was that I did not have the technical skills to do uh, live shows or uh, download, uh, sorry, uh, record videos. At that time, 15 years ago, I could not do that. I, I, had, no, I had no idea how, to, how that worked. So later on, I had to learn, educate myself. How does a streaming app works? How does YouTube works? And so on. You know, Rome was not built in one day. Yes, I started late with my live shows and videos, but it's never too late. But remember, like Christian Prince, we used to sit on Paul Talk. I had my own room. We used to even invite Muslim uh, shuyukh, and I debated many shuyukh, many Muslim scholars, many apologists, but unfortunately, it's not recorded. But I, I debated hundreds of Muslims in my life, hundreds. I even lost count, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> so if you want to know more about me, guys, there's an about page on my YouTube page, channel. You can read what Rob Christian did in, in the last 15 years, basically. And why I always say, more than 90% of the Muslim Ummah who do not know Arabic are tricked and deceived because you do not know Arabic. You don't need your Arabic books. And what they say in authentic reports like these about the satanic verses. So are the satanic verses real? Did they really happen in the life of Muhammad? <laughs> Certainly they did. And we showed you 100% crystal clear proof waterproof that the satanic verses are an historical event in the life of Muhammad. And why Muslims are not calling me? My Skype is open. What happened? Let me try to call this guy. No, he's not he's not online. You had user from the other time, from the other day. Can you remember him? The guy who used to drive? I'm not sure if he's going to pick up. Pick up, pick up, Jihad. Jihad is unavailable, brother. Oh boy. Any other Mohammedan? Is there any Mohammedan? Is there any Mohammedan who would defend his satanic prophet? I think Jihad Yusuf is maybe driving again. Maybe he's a pizza delivery boy like... Uh, Abbas from Speaker's Corner. For, for some reason, when we call these guys, these kids, they're always driving. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Arabic is not really easy language, right, guys? A really difficult language to learn. But if you want to learn, you need to start with the alphabet. Learn the, the letters of the alphabet and start from there, right? I think uh, humans are smart. If they really want to learn something new, if you, can, if you want to learn how to drive, you won't learn in one day. Baby steps, and you will get there, right? You will get there. Uh, guys, again, I'm not a scholar of the Arabic language, and I will never claim to be one. But my Arabic skills are good enough, even better than Allah. Allah's Arabic in the Quran. So I can go to the Quran, I can go to the Islamic books to refute Allah and his satanic prophet. And remember, Allah is Satan in disguise. And today we proved it. And why Allah need to wait for eight years to abrogate supposedly the satanic verses? Why Muhammad? There's nothing called Allah, right guys? Why Muhammad need to wait eight years? Because Muhammad forgot about it. He forgot what he said in, in Mecca. When he went to Medina, a Jew came to remind him about the satanic verses in Surah al Najm. Yeah, Muhammad. And we gave you the name of the Jew, right guys? Ibn al-Akhtab, right? Ibn al-Akhtab, a Jew from Medina. After eight years, he had to remind Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, the Jew said, you still have something called satanic verses in Surah Al-Najm. On the other hand, you're preaching about one God, Allah, who you claim to be calling Allah. But in, if we read Surah Al-Najm, we see satanic verses. 
Muhammad thought, oh, oh, I'm got, I, I just got busted by a Jew. Let me abrogate it with the chapter Surah Al-Hajj that was supposedly sent down in Medina. So after eight years, Muhammad decides to abrogate the satanic verses. Do you see how damaging this is? Eight long years, no abrogation? <laughs> eight damn years. Eight years. No abrogation for the satanic verses. Why eight years, Rob? Again, again, let me repeat it again, guys. Muhammad is in Mecca, right? He starts to receive satanic verses. He was in Mecca. Then he leaves Mecca. He leaves Mecca and he goes to Medina. There's a gap, guys, between Al-Hajj in Medina and al Najm in Mecca. Eight years gap. So it takes Muhammad eight years to abrogate a Mecca satanic, two, two verses to be specific, two satanic verses. تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَى وَإِنَّ شَفَاعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَجَى Muhammad abrogates this Meccan part in the Quran, the satanic verses, after eight long years. Why is that, ya Muslimin? Why is that? Because Muhammad was busted by the Jews. Jews used to always bust Muhammad. Remember the other hadith, guys? Let me show you another hadith, how a Jew busted Muhammad. Watch. I hope I will find it easily, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Let's see. Look, guys. Always the Jews busting Muhammad. This, this is a Jew, and this is not a Jew. Look, if you go to Sunan and Nisa'i, hadith number 3000, and let me give you the link, 3773. Guys, focus, please. Focus, Jews always busting Muhammad. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Yassar from Qutayla, a woman from Juhayna, that a Jew, look, a Jew, always the Jews. The Jews, always the Jews busting Muhammad. Jews, always the Jews busting Muhammad. A Jew came to Muhammad, and look how he's going to bust Muhammad, watch. You, Muhammad, the Jew is saying, so the Jews is talking here, right? The Jew is talking. You, Muhammad, are setting up rivals to Allah. You are a mushrik. The Jew is saying to Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, you are a mushrik. You are associating partners with Allah. Guys, are you still following? Do you see how a Jew busting him? Ya Muhammad, you are a mushrik. You, Muhammad, say whatever Allah wills and you will, and you say by the Kaaba. Uh-oh. Do you see? How Muhammad was a mushrik for all that time. Imagine if the Jew did not come and bust Muhammad. Muhammad would still be a mushrik. So after getting spanked by the Jew, Muhammad changes his mind. And he abrogates the following. Watch. So the Prophet Muhammad commanded the Sahaba. It commanded them, his followers. If they wanted to swear an oath to say, By the Lord of the Kaaba. And to say, whatever Allah wills, then what you will, ya Muhammad. So Muhammad used to say, Allah wills and you will. <laughs> and you say by the Kaaba. The later Muhammad had to put in the Lord of the Kaaba to make it uh, sound like it's Allah of the Kaaba. But he say by the Kaaba. So the Kaaba was an idol too. The Kaaba was an idol too. And Muhammad was, uh, was, was equal to Allah too. Do you see it? What Allah wills and you will. Yeah, Muhammad. So you see how Muhammad was actually making himself equal with Allah, and how the Kaaba was even an idol. Muhammad, after getting busted, he puts in the Lord of the Kaaba. Rabb al Kaaba, the Lord of the Kaaba, Rabb. Rabb Rab in Arabic means, guys, the Lord, right? Or Lord, meaning God, right? Rabb al Kaaba. Do you see it? Muhammad always getting spent. Rabb al Kaaba. You see it? Rabb al Kaaba. Rabb al Kaaba. And this is Sahih. Muslims can't say this is Da'if, brother. Again, let me give you the link. This hadith in front of you proving that Muhammad is a nice little mushrik and always the Jews must correct Muhammad. Imagine if this Jew did not come to Muhammad. Muslims till today would say, 
by the Kaaba and what Allah wills you and Ya Muhammad what you will. Whatever Allah wills and what you will. And by the Kaaba, not by the Lord of the Kaaba. Wow! <laughs> any Muhammadan? Do we have any guests, guys? What's going on today? Only 144 white people watching? Guys, is it the day of that year? Or are the Christians simply lazy, not inviting? Anyway, it is what it is. I really thought, I mean, I put it on Patreon. I put it on Facebook. I even put a, a, a post on my community post. Where are the people today? Is it, is it, is it, am I really lucky today, guys? What's going on? Normally, we have more than 200 people watching. What is going on? Is this topic too, too embarrassing to come and watch it, even for the Christians? I don't know. 149 people watching. Oh, man. 150. I'm lucky, guys. 150 people. Wow. Yeah. Seems that Christians only love to watch Christian Prince. Only Christian Prince, brother. Yeah, well, when have you seen Christian Prince talk about this topic before? Or go to these books? Never. I'm the first one, guy. Guys, I'm the first one. I'm uh, honest. Any Mohammedan? Is there any Mohammedan? Well, what about the Christians in Europe and America? Don't tell me the Christians in Europe and America and Australia are asleep now. Maybe only the Indonesians are asleep. Are you saying that our audience are only from Indonesia? <clears throat> no, Miss Piggy, uh, 155 is not much. We have normally we have over 200 people. All right. Yeah, where are the Christians in America? It seems that the Christians in America, I mean the majority of Christians, where are they? Yeah, in Europe it's still uh, I think it's around 8 8 o'clock. I don't know how what time uh, in Europe it is. 8 o'clock? 7.33? Okay, 7.33. Yeah. So, yeah. Are, or maybe there are only Christians and Muslims uh, in Indonesia. I don't know. I know we have a lot, a huge Indonesian crowd. But come on, man. You see, the Christians and Muslims in the rest of the world are simply lazy. That's what it, what it means, right? 138 people watching. And so I think I scared the rest away. Because I'm honest. And some people, you know, can, they can't handle honesty. Right? Some people cannot handle honesty. So they leave. So guys, uh, if you really care about the truth, if you want to help your brothers and sisters in humanity out, those Muslims, they are still our brothers and sisters in humanity. We do not hate any Muslim, but we really need to help them by showing them what the books are saying, not what the lies, how Muslim scholars lie to them and only cherry pick. You know what? This is daif. This is sahih. Hey, since this is sahih, I'm not going to bring it up because many Muslims will leave Islam. So let me only talk about the rejected ones, the daif ones, the, uh, 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 the, the mursal ones, as we showed you. They don't like to talk about the embarrassing sahih ones, right? Truth hurts, exactly. Exactly, uh, M. Lyons, 31. Yeah, eight years, exactly. Muhammad had to wait eight years for abrogating the satanic verse. Eight long years. Only and only because a Jew came to remind him. Don't we always say, Muhammad says this, then immediately he forgets what he said earlier. And this is when you are a fake prophet, of course you're going to forget what you told the people in Mecca when you supposedly received the Surah Al-Najm. Of course you're going to forget what you said. So a Jew, one of the, your enemies, need to remind you about it. And then you start to feel the heat as Muhammad. And you need to abrogate your own verses, your own words. Because you... Self imploded basically. You did a self implosion, self destruct, and proves that Muhammad is a fake prophet. Eight long years 
for supposedly Allah to abrogate the satanic verses. Why? Why Allah waited eight years to send Jibreel and abrogate the satanic verses? Why? No answer. Allahu alam, brother. That's the final answer from the Muslims always. Allahu alam. Allah knows best why Allah waited eight years. No, Muhammadan. Is there any Christian guys? The phone lines are open for the Christians. Maybe a Christian will call in. Maybe you want to add something, or maybe you have a question regarding today's topic. Is there a Christian guys who wants to call before we wrap things up? Why no answer? Uh, because uh, I mean, try to put yourself in their shoes, dikus, dikus, dikus. Try to put yourself in their shoes. Can you answer the, this question for them? No. Do you think any Muslim would dare to say why? <laughs> of course he has no answer. Eight long years. Muhammad Hamdan, if you're a Muslim, call me. Let us have some uh, fun life on air. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Call me. I'm waiting for the Muslim to call. Or maybe we have Christians who wants to call. Everybody is free. Everybody is allowed to call. No calls today? Wow, okay. All right. <sighs> man, today we did some damage, man. We did so much damage today. Nur al-Masih. What a dead man. Welcome, you're live on air, brother. Are you there? Hello, can you hear me, brother? Yes, hello. Finally, last time I could not hear you. You fixed your mic, it seems. Welcome. Yes, I can. Uh, sorry, I uh, just bought a new mic. All right, brother. Just Salam al-Masih. <laughs> Peace of Christ to you. Welcome. Salam al-Masih, brother. May Habibi, God bless Salam you. Salam wa Peace and grace to you. Welcome. Rabbi, barik khadmatik. Shukran, Habibi. Shukran. I, I did enjoy this video, really. I did enjoy because... Uh, the information is stunning, brother. Damaging, right? The information, yeah, it's damaging. You are giving the Sahih is not like you said, Muslims, uh, they always go to Daif. Yes. And they tell you this Daif. You are right, brother. Yeah. I just uh, want to, I was ju just want to add. Yes. This is the behavior of Muhammad because him, he was trying 30 years to convince people of Islam, but he couldn't. So he tried to please the Kuffar, and we know this yes. behavior. He tried to reconcile with behavior. the Kuffar, with his own family, right, in Mecca, and he brought them the satanic yeah. verses, All right? Exactly. Yeah, and also that behavior is proved when he, uh, in the Surah uh, Abbas, yes. Surah Abbas, yes. uh, with uh, Ibn, uh, Ibn Umm Maktoum. Yes. When he wants discussing with uh, Abu Jal and another guy, mm -hmm. he turned uh, and he was grumpy. Abbasi grumpy, you know that. Mm -hmm. And because he wants to please the kuffar. Yes. So he turned away from that and he was grumpy to him. So Allah, after he correct his behavior, and we know this game. So Muhammad, he tried, he tried with a lot even to uh, prostrate prostrate and yes judud yes judud yes sujud he did sujud, sujud. and he prostrated yeah. to allah tal uzza wal manat and later he said this is from uh, this is from satan sorry jibril just came to me i after 8 years by the way as we showed you right after 8 years because mm -hmm. a jew came to bust him right he told him hey muhammad did you forgot about the uh, the satanic verses they're still in your quran and then after eight years, yeah. Muhammad decides to abrogate them, as we told you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, when Jibril was before this eight years, this yes. is the question. Yeah, where is Jibril? Where is yes. <laughs> where, where is, is Jibril? Muhammad I think Jibril, brother, was drinking coffee. Maybe a nice cappuccino. What do you think? <laughs> I think Jibril was maybe, maybe thirsty. You know, uh, remember the years in Jannah are different than the years here on earth. So maybe that's why Jibril take... A long, long break 
right? Heavily break. Maybe heavily break is one minute. Allahu alam, right? <laughs> Yeah, maybe he was making a made hand coffee. Yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, so then uh, he bought himself a nice ticket, and he took the the you know uh, burak and he jumped on burak and he came down to earth after eight years. Allahu alam, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's so funny, brother. Yeah. Well, well, Muhammad, he was a prophet. Uh, you know, the prophet. Yeah. They, are, they 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 need to be like protected from uh, from yeah. uh, this. Brother, didn't Allah in the Quran said that He will protect His messengers, His prophets? Yeah, but He said. So we have an obligation, that, right? Yeah, uh, and yeah. but also He said that uh, uh, every time uh, the Satan yeah. put in the uh, and if omniator. Um, Yes, and yeah, he, he tongue, made yeah. also the the others. <laughs> he yeah. made also the, the other prophets. They were not protected by Allah. Yeah, that Allah can, that Satan can put them in the mouth of the prophet. So how can you trust this prophet? Yes, exactly, exactly. So I hope, I hope uh, this video. I'm not sure if the Christians will do their homework and spread our video, or maybe take snippets, maybe short clips, right? Because this video need to go viral. Honest to God, yeah, Christians, please don't do it for me. I don't need. I I already got the information. You received the information, so. Help me to help you. Help your brothers and sisters in humanity who are the Muslims who are deceived by their scholars. Help them by sharing this information on the World Wide Web, on the Internet. Don't do it for me. I, I don't need this information. But help your brothers and sisters out. Do polemics, yeah. guys. Yes. Yes, brother. I, I am an Arab Christian. Uh, Arab- I was a Muslim, and uh, you were you a know, Muslim. This, oh, I didn't know that, Tunu Al Masih. Sorry, you were a Muslim. No, I was a, no, I was a Muslim. Sorry. Wow, what happened, bro? Can you tell us why? Why you left Islam? You now you became a Christian. Why? Uh, because I read the Bible when I had uh, some questions, wow. uh, especially okay. about Jesus in the in mm. the Quran. Wow. I had question. I couldn't find the uh, answers. Mm. Wow, wow. So someone give me the Bible. Uh, Amud gave me the Bible. He had it from Europe. Wow. He, so another Muslim gave you the Bible and that made you leave Islam? Yeah. Wow. Because he didn't want to read the Bible, but uh, wow. I asked him to give it to me. So, <laughs> My my friend, so now Allah will not give you 70 huris, brother, and two from the Jews and Christians from Hellfire, brother. You're going to miss the yes. Uh, yes. big-breasted huris. I mean, come on, man. Are you sure you want to be uh, still be a Christian? Yes, I will die for that, <laughs> brother. <laughs> God bless you, bro. Guys, this is again our brother, uh, Nur al-Masih, L-O-C, Nur al-Masih, uh, the admin in, in our live chat. So, uh, God bless you, bro. Do you, what do you want to say to the Muslims? I mean, you used to be a Muslim. What do you want to say to them if they may be hearing or listening to you? What do you want to tell them? I will ask them just to get out of the fear of questioning and searching and reading by themselves. Do not let uh, let uh, imams like to you go do your homework. As the Bible tells tell us, Fetish al Kutub. Fetish al Kutub, yeah. Open your books uh, and uh, re- do research. Exactly. Fetish al Kutub, yeah. Do, do your own research yeah. like our brother Noor here. Do research like Rob Christian. And you will, I'm sure you're going to leave Islam. But when if you stay a lazy Muslim, and you only listen and parrot what your scholars say, you're going to die in your sins. Please wake up, ya Muslimin. We do not hate yes. you. We are not haters. You always call us haters. We are not haters. We only read your books. We read your books. And when we read your books, we see how damaging they are. Crystal clear, sahih, hadith, proving that Muhammad delivers satanic verses. Muhammad that day became a mushrik. So why are you following a mushrik prophet? That's the only question that we need to ask the Muslims. Why are you following yes. a mushrik prophet? Yes, brother. You, you know, we risk our life to talk about this. Exactly. I know yeah. that you are risking your life because mm-hmm. uh, you love Muslims. Yes, we, we do this out to, of love. Exactly. To, yeah. to get out uh, of hell. And uh, we want Muslims. We pray for Muslims every day that they can, they can see the truth. They need to see God, the true God. Yeah. And it is their right. It's the right of 
every human to seek God. And when you seek God, when you seek Him, yes. He will guide you to he the will, truth. He will, he, will, he will find you, yeah. If you really truly seek the living God, not uh, Satan, I mean Allah of Islam, if you uh, pray and ask the true living God of the Bible, please, O God of the Holy Bible, if you are true, if you are the living God as you claim to be, please show me the way. And I'm sure because he is a living God. God of the Bible is the living God. He will guide you and he will invite you and he will show you the way. He will. He's like your father. Don't be afraid. Don't fear. Don't fear the Allah of Islam yeah. because Allah is Satan. Don't fear him. Fear what will happen to you if you allow yourself to be deceived by your Muslim scholars who have deceiving you from the moment you are born in your Muslim family in this evil cult. Please wake up, ya Muslimin. I mean, uh, look, Nur al-Masih used to be a Muslim like you. And when he found out that Islam is fake, after also reading the Bible, the only thing he could do, because he is truthful to himself, to his salvation, he had to leave Islam and become a Christian brother like me. Everybody here in the live chat. Right? Brother, I was just to add something. Uh, when I was searching and reading the Bible, there was no internet where I live in Morocco. So now Muslims, they have a lot of resources, like the, the website that you mm -hmm. were mentioning. They can download these books and they can read them and they will find how Islam is a fake, how Islam is, uh, is satanic. And they need to get out of this religion. Exactly. Yeah. All right, brother, any last words before we let you go? What do you want to say before, you, uh, before we let you go? What do you want to say? Uh, did we lie? Did we say something wrong? Did we lie about the Islamic books or everything that we read was word for word? Good translation. Did no I lie? Brother, maybe maybe you, you can you correct me, brother. Maybe I said something <laughs> wrong. <laughs> no, brother, you were giving the search from Islamic sources. What's a, <laughs> what's a, what can be oh. that a lie? Thank you, brother. Thank brother, you for your confirmation, you. Habibi. I love your work and uh, God you. bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being my admin, Habibi. Thank you for oh, for being my admin and uh, may God bless you and your family. Maybe there are still Muslims in your family. May our Lord and Savior open their eyes, uh, like He opened your eyes. God bless you, Habibi. Uh, Amen. And I just want to tell to Christians, please share these materials. Amen. Amen. And help Brother Rob. Help him. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, Indeed. brother, and thank you for being an admin, Habibi. Rabbi Kunma. Oh, that's an honor to help you and to serve you, brother, because when we serve one another, we serve in God. Amen, amen, amen. We, we have to and do it God together. We cannot you, do this on our own. And again, we are nothing but servants, right? We only serve the truth, and we serve you guys. You don't need us, but if it's the plan of God for us to use our uh, language skills and uh, our knowledge, then so be it, right? Thank you for your call, brother, and uh, thank, uh, please call me, uh, you, and please continue confirm what we say, because many people don't know Arabic, and maybe, you know, when they see another Arabic speaker, and you are confirming, they will, you know, two are more than one guy, right? So thank you for being here again, brother, and yes, thank you for, uh, for your help. Anytime, brother. Habibi. Thank you, brother. God Habibi. Bye -bye. Allah barak. Rabbi barakak, Habibi. Bye-bye. Rabbi barak. God bless you, uh, brother uh, LOC, or... Uh, Noor El Masih, thank you for your call, brother. Uh, that was amazing, man. It's an honor to to have uh, an ex-Muslim who used to be an ex-Muslim or a Muslim who became an ex-Muslim and now a Christian, and he's one of my admins. And not only him, guys. We have Sheikh Umut, Sheikh Umut, another ex-Muslim. Uh, actually, we have many ex-Muslims who are part of our team and uh, doing many th stuff in the background uh, we can't mention all of them all of their names you know you know how how dangerous this can be but keep all the warriors keep all the admins everyone who is doing amazing work in the background keep all of us in your prayers guys please don't underestimate the powers of prayers and thank you for your prayers it seems that our uh, computer, my computer is still up and running. I really was afraid that maybe because I am now using a power supply, one of the parts that I'm using in my computer right now is around eight years old. So still, it's still working. So we are good to go. 
Oh, we have another call. Let's see. Hello, you're live on air. Hello, dear brother of Christian. How are you? I'm good. What's up? Welcome. What about you? I'm fine. Thank you. Welcome. I uh, watched your uh, session. It is uh, uh, it is amazing. I must say that uh, uh, from when I heard about you that some two years ago, uh, I watched that you are improving constantly and now you are, uh, uh, every session of you, it is pure gold. Every you, session of you, it is pure gold. And I wanted to say this because uh, I, heard that, I heard that you are upset because of the lack of... Um, um, viewers, yeah. Of, uh, viewers, yeah. Uh, let me say this. Um, uh, these viewers that you have, they are truthful. Why is that? Oh, that's for sure. Important? That's for sure. Of course, yeah. But uh, this is, uh, they are truthful because uh, if I uh, go to uh, CP, everybody loves CP because has a way of speaking, because has a, a way of uh, dealing things. Uh, but, but the truthful ones are uh, listening to the information. The truthful ones are always listening to the information. The, the flavor of uh, how they speak, of how they deal with the Muslims, it is secondary. First is the information, and uh, you are a beautiful. Thank you, brother. Bring you. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, we are we are still humans. I am a work in progress. Again, let me repeat myself. I am a work in progress. I am a sinner. I need Jesus too. And you know, sometimes when you put a lot of work, a lot of hours in your materials, in my slide, I really, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, brag or something, God forbid. But I, we put a lot of time in our live shows and our slides. And when you only get around 100 people watching, it's it's killing for you sometimes. Right? So, you know, it is what it is. But I hope that my live shows won't go in vain. And I really think want to thank everybody again in the live chat. Guys. I'm not attacking you, please. Uh, uh, let us not misunderstand each other. I know you have been with me for so many years now, but I hope that while our ministry will grow, like the brothers saying, you know, I know there are many truthful uh, supporters and, and viewers out there, so God bless you again, like our brother here is on the, is, who's on the call, uh, brother uh, Nur al-Messiah, all the admins who are doing an amazing job, but I hope one day uh, uh, our ministry will grow more and more, and that we can do this full time. That's the only thing that I wish for. That many of our lectures, our videos and, and shows will go viral. You know, and again, I'm a sinner. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I say stuff that I do not mean. I'm a work in progress. And may our Lord and Savior forgive me and, uh, you know, uh, help me through my difficult times. We are all humans, guys, right, in the end? Yes, who, who is not a sinner? Who is not a sinner, but we, if I, we, we, we have uh, the moral support in Jesus, we will okay. uh, break only uh, uh, through this uh, black knight, which is uh, the envy of the devil, and uh, we'll, we'll get to, we will get, we will arrive to the real life, which is in your Jesus, in the eternal life. Mm -hmm. exactly, oh, that my that, friend. that uh, I wanted to say to you. So thank you for your brother, kind words, brother. man. It's really mo motivating when I hear such kind words. And, uh, you know, as long, like I s always say, as long our Lord and Savior want us to do this and he gives us the breath of life in our lungs and he blesses us to continue doing our work, then so be it. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Any last yes. words before we uh, yes. let you go, brother? Yes, uh, an extra Please. motivation. One, uh, it is, I don't know, I think I, I uh, read it to the Moody Bible since it's, I don't know. Uh, there was a pastor. There was a pastor, a small church. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone uh, drove by and, uh, I don't know, wanted to do something. And entered into the church. The church was empty and the pastor was, the pastor was speaking. Mm. And he was, I don't know, something from the Bible, uh, uh, new, new will, uh, something from John, I said. And uh, uh, the individual come, come closer, come close to the, the pastor and said, Hey man, uh, uh, you know, the, the church is empty. And the pastor said, so what? This, is mean, this means that I don't have to do my job. Yeah, and those uh, those uh, chairs and those uh, walls and those uh, stones from the church will be um, uh, how you say witnesses at the, before the Lamb before Jesus. Uh, 
yeah. to the judgment. So sorry, this is extra motivation. Yeah. So God bless you, brother Rob. Thank you, you uh, thank you, my friend, fine. my dear friend. Uh, th- uh, always, always uh, a blessing to have you here on the call. Uh, go with the peace of Christ. Thank you for your amazing kind words, and uh, I will take them with me. And you know, like I said, it sometimes it 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 hurts to see small numbers, but you know. Uh, we'll we'll be there eventually, and uh, uh, we will ask our Lord and Savior for the numbers to grow. And if it's His plan for our videos and lives to go viral, then so be it. All right. Thank you again, brother, and uh, God wait, bless you. Wait a See. second. Yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. I got something very, very. I wanted to say. Uh, I remember. Oh, okay. I watched Zakir Naik, mm-hmm. and he has two two point nine million. Uh, subscribers and you have uh, some t- lesser than yeah. but you have stones and he has leaves that's <laughs> exactly. it yeah. okay goodbye God thank you God thank you oh, that's good. amazing thank you so much for those last words well, God bless you Habibi well, bye 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 God bless you bye bye wow <laughs> that was amazing yeah Muhammad Hamdan in the live chat there's a Muhammadan I think he's a nice little jihadi boy he's asking for our brother LOC his uh, personal information because he wants clearly he wants to do jihad on him uh, brother go smoke to blackstone please brother you just became my personal than me go smooch and lick the black stones right go smooch and lick the black stones go do a jihad on maybe on some else uh, and uh, uh, Muhammad Hamdan you are a nice little puppy you're a coward we are spanking your fake prophet left and right the only thing you can do is ask for personal information to try to hunt down ex-Muslims who became Christians. Oh, good luck with that. See, uh, guys, they don't care. They don't care if we spank their prophet. They only th- care about jihad and how they uh, can uh, try to take out uh, ex-Muslims. Because the moment they see an ex-Muslim becoming a Christian, it's damaging, right? It's damaging for the ummah. So, you see? They don't care about uh, their Islamic books. The only thing they care about is jihad. If you kill an ex-Muslim brother, may Allah will give you a lot of uh, whores in his Jannah, brother. With big breasts. I mean, that's the only job of the Muslims. Because Allah cannot do the job. Allah himself cannot come down and fight. He needs to, uh, his minions, I mean Satan, needs his minions to fight for him. To do, do the filthy job of killing uh, ex-Muslims instead. Allah is one tiny weakling... This is why he need Muslims to do the killing for him instead. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And Allah knows a lot of breasts, brother. Allah knows a lot of breasts. Guys, I hope you took notes. I hope you learned some new material. I hope you benefited from our videos today. Um, from our live show, sorry. I hope you took notes. I hope you took screenshots. And for the people who just joined or joined too late, again, the admins will provide the references in the comment section. Uh, uh, we'll also uh, provide the timestamps and I will pin up the timestamps if the admins uh, are finished with uh, putting the timestamps uh, in a comment. And uh, yeah, please keep us in your prayers, guys. Keep the admins in your prayers. Lord willing, Lord willing, he will allow me to continue doing my ministry. If the Lord will continue giving me the breath of life in my lungs, and if it's his plan for me to do what I do to expose the evil lies of these Muslim scholars who are too embarrassed, they need to lie, and we need to expose them, then so be it. If this is my if this is my decree, if this is the plan of God for me to do this, then so be it. Thank you for being here again, guys. If you want to help us out financially, you can do that on patreon.com. You can find the information in the description box. Please don't forget also to subscribe to our other social media. Also, to my second YouTube channel. I have a second YouTube channel because you never know when we are going to get another ban or strike. Right? You know how uh, triggered Muslims can be. So make sure to subscribe also to my secondary YouTube channel because if I'm banned here, I will continue on my second channel. Again, thank you guys. Go with the peace of Christ. May our Lord and Savior, our holy living God, Jesus Christ, bless you and your loved ones. 
Keep us in your prayers. Keep the admins in your prayers. And again, every tongue, every knee, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And again, as we prove today to everybody from the Sahih, a hadith, that Muhammad is nothing but the Satan prophet. Muhammad is a prophet of Satan. And no Muslim scholar can do anything about it but to lie and deceive and cherry pick what he likes. Thank you for being here, guys. Lord willing, we will see each other again very soon. Deus vult. Deus vult. We will see each other very soon. God bless you. See you again very soon. Bye bye. subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications. Backup channel, please subscribe. Did you subscribe guys?